Mark Clegg. Thank you. Well, good evening, councillors, members of the gallery, and to our viewers live streaming tonight's meeting. My name's John Kavanagh, and I'm the chairperson of council of the uh, council meeting and planning of related matters, and I'm currently the mayor. And it's a pleasure to welcome you to tonight's meeting. Our meeting is being held in the traditional country of the Wurundjeri people, and I acknowledge them as traditional owners. I'd like to pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and elders from other communities who may be with us this evening. I acknowledge that currently many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have made moorland home, and in doing so have contributed to the rich diversity of this municipality. Members of the gallery, please note that during this meeting, it will, is being recorded and web streamed live to Council's website and Facebook. This recording will also be available as video and on demand. Gallery attendees are advised that they will be recorded during the meeting. Councillors are reminded that in line with the adopted councillor conduct principles as outlined in the councillor code of conduct, councillors should ensure that they conduct themselves in this meeting with integrity, impartially exercise their responsibilities in the interests of the local community and not to prop improperly seek to confer or advantage any person. This behaviour will support the principles of leadership and good governance and secures public confidence in the office of councillor. Members of the gallery, in the event of an emergency or disruption, we may be required to act take action and ensure the safety of attendees. Please follow uh, directions issued by council staff and security officers. Thank you. Thank you for your understanding and cooperation. Um, councillors, I've been informed that Councillor Sue Bolton and Councillor Ali Erfanli <coughs> are both running late, but will be here. Currently, the, the councillors in attendance are Councillor uh, and Olivia Carly Hannon, Councillor Helen Davidson, Hello. Councillor Jess Dorney, the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Natalie Abu, Councillor Dale Martin, Councillor Mark Riley, Councillor Lambros Tapanos, and Councillor Oscar Yildiz. Planning officers in attendance to my left is the Group Manager of City Development, Philip Priest. We also have Planning Coordinator, Darren Camilleri. Uh, Mark Hughes, Robert uh, Shadford, Principal Urban Planning Planner, Lauren McGowan, Unit Manager of Governance, Sally Curran, and Governance Officer, Saskia Hunter. Uh, apologies, councillors, I don't think we have any apologies tonight, as the two councillors have made it known that they are, will be here. So we'll move on now to the adoption of the minutes. Could I have a motion for the adoption of the minutes of the meeting held on the 22nd of August, 2018. Moved by Councillor Yildiz. And do I have a seconder? And Councillor Carly Hannon. Would you like to speak to it, Councillor Yildiz? Councillor Carly Hannon, any discussion, councillors? Being no discussion, I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour, against, declare that carried. Yep, we'll get to that. Yep. Now, uh, I welcome Councillor Sue Bolton to the meeting. Thank you, Councillor Bolton. Uh, councillors, uh, are there any conflicts of interest? And before I ask other councillors, I'll be declaring a conflict of interest in the last item on tonight's agenda, DED 6018. I'll be declaring that from an indirect interest by close association in that my son Christopher, who's a real estate agent, has been selling some of those uh, off the plan um, townhouses that are involved in that development. So therefore, I have a conflict of interest and I will be leaving the meeting at that time and have no part in the discussion or the vote. Are there any other conflicts of interest to declare? There being no others, we'll move on. I'll give you an outline of how the planning and related matters meeting will occur this evening. We have three steps. First of all, the relevant planner will introduce the report and the officer recommendations. I'll then give objectors the opportunity to move to the lectern and to make their submission. After this time, the applicant will also have an opportunity to speak. If you are making a submission, please state your name and your street not necessarily the number if you don't wish, you're requested to present viewpoints clearly and concisely as to why you either support or oppose the planning application. Uh, if you're opposed to a planning application, it'd be good if you could inform the meeting why you're opposed and even if you can, a possible, as a possible alternative that would uh, please you. Please note that we have three minute limit per speaker, but as chairperson, I reserve the right to increase or reduce that time to any speaker. So we move on to the presentation of the reports. And the first presentation of report that we have tonight 
is DED 5618, 282 to 284 Victoria Street, Brunswick. Uh, planning application number MPS 214-1017-C. And I'll move to the officer to present the report. Thank you, Darren. Thank you. So this is an application to amend a planning permit that is in existence for a childcare uh, facility at uh, Victoria Street, Brunswick. Uh, the subject site is up on the screen. <coughs> Was that up on the screen? Here we go. Okay. It's an existing childcare facility. Sorry. In a mixed use zone, a design development overlay, schedule 18, and an environmental audit overlay. In relation to the context of the facility, um, it has an abuttal to uh, existing dwelling at 280 Victoria Street, and on the cross the road, it also has uh, dwellings. The other interfaces are industrial in nature. <coughs> so the proposal includes retrospective approval for pipe work associated with a rainwater tank and vents and exhaust along the east side of the boundary, um, easily shown on the photos because they're already built. And as you can see, on the left-hand side, you see these red squares which show the kitchen uh, inlets that draw in air. And then you see the green square, which is a laundry exhaust. The proposal is also to uh, have retrospective approval for air conditioning units that are located on the roof. And you can see them located in this location here. The air conditioning units are shown yellow on this plan, so you can see its proximity in relation to the neighbouring property at 280 Victoria Street. The proposal is also to approve duct rises to each of the vents and exhaust outlets and glass balustrading at the first and second floor. So that's the glass balustrading, which is required, as I understand it, to meet regulations for safety for children. Uh, and also the proposals to include duct rises to expel the air and gases above the roof line of the facility. And lastly, the proposals to amend a condition eight of the planning permit. It's in relation to the hours of operation. So from Monday to Friday, currently the proposal has a permit to operate till 6.30 and this request is to extend that by 30 minutes to 7 p.m. The proposal is also to include um, additional uses that are in association with the childcare use that are noted on the screen, and the hours there 6.30 till 10 p.m. Monday to Friday, and Saturday and Sunday 9 till 4 p.m. The proposal was advertised and we received 115 objections, including 94 pro formas and 134 pro forma letters of support. The key issues raised were impacts related to the change of hours, noise, smell, air and aesthetic impacts, that the duct rises and units would reinforce the commercial appearance of the building and that the external duct rises should have been put inside the building. It's a map showing the location of the individual objections. And the officer's recommendation is contained in uh, the report but the recommendations that are noticed a decision to grant an amended permit be issued. And I note two key conditions of the recommendation, and one is that the pipework and duct rises be painted to match the, the wall, to blend in with the wall. And secondly, that a further acoustic report be submitted after the duct rises are installed, demonstrating that there's compliance. And I'll just make a note uh, at the bottom there that there's an addendum or an additional condition that's been added to the officer's recommendation and that's that um, the use must at all times must comply with the state environmental protection policy. That is a standard condition that we put on most of our planning permits but it didn't make its way onto the agenda so this is a note to say that that is the recommendation of the officers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just before I ask for objectors, are there any um, supporters who are in the audience other than the applicant and if there are, are there any supporters that wish to speak? Oh, thank you, just because I know there, there were others. And, okay, and you're not the applicant? 
No, okay. So I'll go to objectors first, then I'll go to supporters, and then we'll hear from the applicant. Okay, that's fine. So objectors, first of all, please. Any objectors that would like to speak? Yes, please. Uh, the gentleman in the front here. Mr Chair, if I can just ask, um, we, we've got a lot of uh, objectors here who um, uh, are either not well enough to speak or language is difficult for them to speak. And so we ask that um, some consideration be given to four people to speak okay. on behalf of, of the dozen or so, okay. and that the could limit I, be I, overridden. I understand. Yeah. Um, could I have a hands uh, raised of those four people that wish to speak? Obviously, you're one of them. And Okay. And are there... Is there any other object? Is there any other objector that also wants to speak? Okay, I'm happy to do to give you extra time as a result. Please go. Okay, whichever order, whichever order you like. Um, it is not lost on us where we live. Lots of strategies, overlays and zonings impact our residential dwelling. We're not against development in the area. My family has witnessed many iterations of their neighbourhood over the course of 60, uh, 55 years. All we are saying is do a better job of it. Do a better job when you decide to place equipment in a manner that is known to cause neighbourly issues. I'm here to protect my elderly parents' amenity they view this as their home and don't want to move. And I suggest that each and every one of you would be doing the same if it were happening to your folks. I'm sure the internals of the applicant's building are beautiful and state of the art, but the way this building informs its boundaries and its touch points to the outside world is not the best. In particular, it's East Boundary. This is the only boundary with residents living on it with a courtyard, thoroughfare and two habitable windows not the wisest place to locate most of a building's commercial plant and exhaust outlets. But I guess this is business. And I hope it's not indicative of developers' attitudes towards residents who neighbour them. The magnitude of waste intrusion imposed on my elderly parents and a reluctance or will for our neighbour to address this has been eye-opening on so many levels. My parents cannot speak to the magnitude of intrusion this plant equipment has had on them, so I speak on their behalf. These intrusions can all be going on at once or in any random sequence of operation and potentially at variable speeds. And the applicant's building is yet to function at capacity. Nonetheless, we are here today in an attempt to address these issues and I am grateful for that. The topic of noise is complex. The devil is in the detail and not an easy one to understand. We have enlisted the services of Octave Acoustics to assist us with this. The existing reports are not thorough and not representative of our general experience for various reasons. The April Synergetics report is not analysing compliance in relation to hours of operation. It is measuring compliance of a piece of equipment at one point in time, which happens to be in a very small slice of time for SEP N1 daytime limits. This report does not detail the equipment's likely impact on overall compliance against evening and nighttime periods, nor does it accurately account for the relevant ambient levels that are, that are a necessary part of determining actual impact of noise produced on the receiver, and in this case, my parents. In addition, the measurement point used was not located at a point where the maximum effective noise level occurs for my parents. The applicant wishes to extend their hours of operation to seven days a week, where lower SEP N1 <coughs> limits apply. The applicant's current perm permitted operating time of 6.30am and closing time of 6.30pm fall within SEP N1 compliance requirements for night and evening periods, respectively. This measurement has not been done. We are doing our best to coexist with our neighbours and to do the right and fair thing. We have lived, long lived next door to commercial operations and have happily coexisted for many years with the previous business owner on our boundary. Despite what you may have heard, we are reasonable people. We respect our neighbours' right to run their business. We're not looking to undermine their viability. 
For the last seven months, our neighbour has been running past their permitted times and performing all their listed ancillary functions with no complaints from us. All we are looking for is some understanding and acknowledgement in the placement of their, pl their plant equipment on the east boundary, that it is intrusive to us and has potential to be even more so. The, this permit goes some way towards that, and we see the efforts of Council to come up with a permit that is reflective of fairness amongst neighbours. Unfortunately, as I mentioned before, noise is complex, and measurements taken by experts are driven by the briefs they are provided. The measurements represented in the existing report unfortunately are not, true and are not true and fair representation of the impact of noise on my parents' amenity. In the spirit of what is fair and respectful for all parties, we ask the permit not be rejected, but instead considered with the following conditions. Specific to the extended hours, assess the additional compliance required for SEP N1, evening and nighttime limits, before more hours of operation are granted. No, I've given you five minutes now, so I'll ask you to wrap up. I will up. wrap okay. up yeah. very quickly. No, that's right. I'm reading out the things you're happy with, I'm happy with that. At a minimum, at a minimum if this permit is granted uh, as presented, we would like to see designated periods of extended hours in a given month. At a minimum as well, we would like, to, we would like noise producing plant to be run for designated activities only, such as community and training meetings. Specific for the four, four flus, we are very grateful for the outlet, for the four flus. The ability for my parents to be able to open our windows for fresh air when they choose to is priceless. We request for the flus a more pleasing aesthetic. This can be achieved with fairly inexpensive treatments. They can be found at Bunnings. We also request consideration for some screening for the tanks. Specific, and I will finish in just a moment, specific to the proposed SEP N1 compliance testing. We ask for impartiality and completeness. We ask that a consultant's brief is prepared and detailed in, in any report provided, an approach agreed to beforehand that will produce a fair representation of our reality. We ask a fairer data set be collected which is indicative of our experience of noise, and noise intrusion and take into consideration SEP in one limits for day, evening and night times. We ask that all equipment, both duct risers and air conditioning units, be run at their maximum capacity and noise assess. We ask condenser units endorsement be subject to this report. Okay, thank you for the submission. Right, the second person to speak, and I'm going to limit the other speakers to four minutes, which is still more than what we normally do. Thanks. Um, I would like to speak specifically to the retrospective nature of the permit. The retrospective nature of the permit is messy. Doing divisive things and then asking for permission to keep, to keep them is messy. It means developers can avoid regulatory scrutiny and conditions placed upon their planned <coughs> actions. Specific to the four air conditioning units, how can the condenser units be endorsed? These units cannot be considered endorsed. These retrospective works have not been measured to accurately, accurately assess if they will comply across the evening and the nighttime periods for SEP N1. If already endorsed, what then? We feel endorsement should be, should be made when relevant and meaningful data sets have been captured and reviewed. We feel this can occur during Council's proposed SEP N1 assessment once the duck risers have been fitted. If this is not the case, then we ask provision be made under SEP N1 to seek an environment improvement plan for the applicant where solutions for containing and managing noise are described and potentially action for the future. It is widely recognised that mechanical equipment becomes noisier with time. The January acoustic report already notes that these units are running louder than manufacturer's specifications due to their location. What happens when the equipment begins to age and becomes noisier? The applicant has already installed not one but four condenser units on our boundary and whilst legally they are able to do so, they have been placed in a manner where we have been told nothing can be done to mitigate any of the sound coming from them. One has to wonder, would the applicant have been so quick to place the units on the east boundary in the manner that they have if the neighbouring property was an aged care facility? The placement is not recommended by EPA and nor considered best practices. We would also like to note that the applicant's internal permit condition back in 2014 stated that the location of the air conditioning units must be detailed in the applicant plans. 
One can only assume that this was requested by council to determine if an environmental improvement plan was needed. The location of this equipment was never provided by the applicant to the council. And final, as built plans for the building's endorsement was made without any clear reference to the location of the units, nor the location of the vents on the east wall. All of which resulting in a scenario where nothing was asked of the applicant to assure noise from plant equipment was considered, or at the very least an improvement plan was in place to deal with future noise issues. Specific to the, specific to the vents, again we are grateful Grateful the vents have been flued and we no longer are greeted with waste air from someone else's activity when we enter our home. We just wonder why it was not considered when we first suggested the idea to the applicant to flue the two laundry outlets back in February 2017. The applicant has never been willing to step over the neighbourly threshold to see the impact of their design on my parents. When invited in August 2017, they preferred to point us to mediation through, a department, through the Department of Justice. This never eventuated. At the same time, all council could tell us was the building has been endorsed. Fast forward 12 months, and we are here today discussing a retrospective permit for the things that are causing major intrusions to my parents' amenity. You I'm can going to ask you to finish up, sir, all right? Just, just finish up. Four minutes. Yep. You can walk the streets of Brunswick and you'll be hard pressed to find any old or modern development treat treat their condenser units in this manner. They have with, without some form of screening or soundproofing. You'll also be hard pressed to find the placement of outtake vents so close to neighbouring windows. How does this represent sustainable urban development? How does it represent what is fair and right and conducive to respectful neighbourly relations? Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your submission. A third person, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I won't take up as much time because I think the two speakers before me mm -hmm. have really um, hit the nail right on the head as far as the issues go. Thank um, you. From my perspective, there's a number of people here who've lived in the, in the, uh, in the Brunswick area for near 60 years. Um, we are three generations. Um, we know thousands of people who live in Brunswick and uh, to say that everyone is um, disappointed, I'd, I'd, be holding, I'd be biting my tongue in, in being so uh, diplomatic. Um, the, the key word that really gets up my goat is uh, the word retrospective. Um, we have a lot of experts, uh, we have a lot of people being paid a lot of money, uh, the developer and owner next door has spent a lot of money, but nowhere was this foreseen. Um, this is not the first building in Australia that has such planned. Um, so the fact that it was left off the plans when the original permit was sought uh, is mind blowing. The fact that the owner chose to do nothing about it after a certificate of completion was issued <coughs> is mind blowing. The fact that the certificate was issued um, with uh, uh, an illegal uh, plant and vent is mind blowing. Um, having said all of that, we're here to, we're solution focused and we're here to solve the problem. To suggest that a few flues and a lick of paint is going to solve it is, is not good enough, I'm sorry. Um, th this is not uh, the Brunswick way. Brunswick is undergoing a lot of gentrification. Uh, we, we are very proud of the place we live in, we work in, and, and we play in. And we want it to stay that way. Um, we are all voters here, we're all ratepayers here. My children go to school here. My parents worked here. I, I live and work here. Um, we cannot have a fly-by-night operator turn up and uh, be above the law and have special rules applied to, to them um, that don't and expect us to have other rules applied to us. Um, having said that, um, I, I am also grateful for some of the suggestions on remedying the issue, uh, in particular the arises. Um, I don't accept that a lick of paint is good enough. I think that other external treatments can be and should be uh, put into place. Um, after all, they are visible from the street and if we want Brunswick to look nice, we, we have to expect that. Um, as far as the noise control goes, um, the government, federal government's own website says that noise control is very important uh, in terms of health and it affects uh, fatigue, provides headaches, stress, uh, doesn't allow people to have uh, rest and sleep and also affects a healthy life. Um, if we are serious about, and particularly given the Royal Commission into Aged Care announced last week, if we are serious about looking after our elderly people, then I would expect 
I would expect that the council steps up to the plate and tells the owner of, of the said property to go above and beyond putting a bit of pipe and a bit of paint. Um, Okay, I'm going to stop you there, Stuart. If, yeah, if I could three, just have 30 yeah. seconds more, please. Uh, no, I think you've, uh, you've, you've repeated yourself on that, so I think we'll go to the next one. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, whoever, Sarah, madam. Mr Chair, can I just ask yeah. you a brief... We had no one introduce themselves this evening. Or give oh, yes, sorry. I think these have been immediate neighbours. So, uh, uh, okay. uh, <clears throat> Hello, I'm Jeff Norrie. I live at 276 Victoria Street. Thank you very much, Jeff. And, and my wife and I object to <coughs> the noise from the air conditioners. Yep. The noise from the air conditioners yes. and the request for extended hours. We don't object to the business. We don't care about the business, just its ill aspects. Understand, uh, we understand that we live in a mixed zone and the regulations mm -hmm. are different. The, the council report says that the air conditioners are endorsed and they're properly screened. They can't be endorsed. It's a physical impossibility if they're not there on the plan to begin with. <coughs> Sorry. And therefore, they can't be screened properly. In the executive summary, uh, uh, it states that on page three that uh, the the noise is not within the sense of the night period, but that's quoting a residential regulation of 2008 re regarding pools and spas. How does that relate to commercial noise? The air, air conditioners were tested in January and April, but only for a short time and not since. And they were not tested, the noise was not tested in our house. Uh, and my objection was in by then. Well, all the council knew about it. Um, we, was, we, I spoke to someone from Synergetics on the 9th of January and discussed our concerns. I've heard nothing since from anyone. Um, it's said that prevention through design can alleviate noise, but nobody seems to have bothered with that. Perhaps if they had, we wouldn't be here. In mediation sessions with the council in January, the only solution was to acoustically shield the air conditioners in their existing position, but at the expense of overhanging into the Cthulhu's property at number 282. 280, sorry. Which, that's it's hardly a solution. At, at one of the two mediation sessions, I offered to be um, a, a kind of go-between between, between the, the two properties in the sense that I'd forward and collect emails. Now, <coughs> Mr Honeybone sent me an email demanding that I uh, disclose names of previous objectors. I refused. He mm -hmm. can't do that. Talking about the, 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 the surrounds on page nine of the report, it talks about one dwelling on the other side. It doesn't mention um, the other two dwellings on the east, two at seven, 278 and 276. I'll, I'll get you to start to wind up, please, Jeff. Okay, yeah. we chose extended hours. But, um, and, we, and we need the... the Air condition is properly screened. Uh, we, we, we don't know how the council arrived at a position of endorsing something that doesn't exist. Mm. Um, that's really about it. Okay. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you for your submission. I think we have one more, do we? Yes. Hi, Anne Murray, 276 Victoria Street. Yeah. We have no ob objection to the business, any businesses in the community, only that they comply with the appropriate gu guidelines, which obviously, in this instance, hasn't been the case. This is all about retrospective permits. This has been a working business 
without permits for the last for the past 12 months. I'd like to say that nothing has been initiated by the owner or council. We have pressed for everything so far. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Were there any other objectors who wish to speak? Okay. Are there any supporters that would wish to speak? Yes, would you like to come forward? No? Oh, you? Yep. Yeah. Hi, my name is Belle Spillman. I'm the um, centre manager at Happy Hippo at 282 Victoria Street. Um, I didn't come as prepared because planning permits are not my expertise. No. Children, families and community are what um, I advocate for on a daily basis. Um, so what I can tell you is we will do whatever it's required to comply with regulation and law. Um, we did. We have created a um, noise management policy to ensure that we are compliant and respecting um, our neighbours and our environment. We cater care and education for 88 families and over 90 children a week in our service and we'd like to think that they're the next generation of Brunswick and that we're educating and raising great citizens that, that will one day be sitting in here and advocating for the, for the rights of, of our community. Um, we're very respectful of what we do um, in terms of our, our operating hours. The reason um, we have put an amendment to our, our current planning permit in to extend those hours is to make sure that we are considerate of our neighbours and we are actually being in line with those things. We are not um, putting in a permit with children's services to change our operating hours or our care hours. So the extended hours are there to cater for staff meetings should we need to utilise the facilities to be able to host an open day should the need be to generate or to be able to have a community day like we just had um, recently. So all of the work we do, we, we, we do to involve the community. We are partnered with quite a few local businesses, aged care facilities, um, the local police and other things. So our goal is to bring everyone together with a shared vision um, to raise great citizens and to educate the young children of Brunswick. That's all yeah, I have to thank say. Thank you very thank much. You. Anyone else would like to speak as a supporter? Yes. My name is Patrick Honeyborn. I'm the applicant. Um, okay, I'll just wait. I'll just, are you, are you speaking as the applicant? Yeah. I'll just see if there's any other speakers for the supporters and I'll come to you, Patrick. All right. Yeah. Any other supporters would like to speak? Last chance. Yes. Um, I'm Heather Honeyborn yeah, and yeah. Um, I am the licensee for the child care centre at 282 Victoria Street. And um, our main focus in it, um, asking for an amendment to our powers that we are allowed to use our centre that um, in our 6.30 to 6.30 uh, operating hours, we don't, we never allowed for staff meetings and um, cleaners to come in at night to provide ex other services that support our childcare centre. So, um, and it's an occasional thing. It's not that we do it every week. Um, it's not that it's there's a set pattern to it, but the facility is required to be able to run our service at an because um, we strive to an exceeding level, and to be able to attain that exceeding level does take for us to be able to upskill our staff and to have those um, community involvements with the community, the parents, um, our latest um, community involvement is with Ronald McDonald House, which was the focus of our community day that we just had. So we really do extend into that community, but the hours are occasional. It's not that it's going to be running till 10 o'clock every night, all day. Um, it is an occasional thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, I'll now go to the applicant and we'll hear from the applicant. <coughs> the objectors allege a lot of improprieties occurred during the development of this project and that's incorrect. We've gone out of our way to work with council and meet council's requirements and the general laws uh, around town planning and construction. We've made offers to uh, box the air conditioning units to further reduce the sound 
um, but the yeah. offer was rejected by the neighbor. We've um, had a number of meetings and we're trying to mediate with them, but the, the quick, the conversations very quickly degenerate into abuse or get sabotaged by the objectors. So I don't know what else to all right, do. Okay, all right, okay. All right, right, I've gone out of my way to try and comply with the neighbors and work with council to come up with a solution. Okay. Okay? No. All right. Okay, just to, uh, okay. Just they've had their chance to no, say no, I've no, done no, the no, wrong thing all the way fair, through. Just, can I just a moment, minutes, sir, just in fairness, in fairness, they haven't been uh, <coughs> casting dispersions on you in any way. They just have. About, they said, I no. don't comply. And I've, and no, I've talked about... council's done this wrong and on, they've just, done that wrong. Just a moment, sir. Compliant. Just a moment. Please. That is or, Sorry. So, please, not, no bad. Right. What's happened is they've come about different planning matters. They haven't made any comments about you as a person or or aggressive behaviour about you or anything of that nature. So, can we just speak to the, speak to the planning application, please? All right. Please. So with the planning matter, in an effort to try and reach a compromise, we've applied, we said to council, we'll flew the vents. There's only one that actually needs to be flued. The rest of the vents in their current format are actually compliant. However, in, a, in an effort to reach a compromise, we've applied to flue the vents. But as you can see, the objecting to the um, flues being external to the building, because they allege it must be internal. Now, there's no actual requirement for the flues to be internal. The air conditioning units were on the original plans that were advertised, and the screening that's in place was as advertised, okay? We have offered to do other things, but they reject those other offers. With the uh, extended hours, we have had to change our application because the neighbours uh, say that the lights are on at night and they complain about the night, uh, the lights being on and people coming and going but it is actually not caring for the children that is occurring. The, the care for the children stops at 6.30 and the people need to leave the building. That's why we've applied until 7 o'clock, so that the staff can leave the building without, without us breaching the permit. The weekend is for maintenance, because maintenance can't occur in the building while the children are there, as there's a risk to the children. So we've asked for the permit to specifically mention four or five activities that can occur on the weekend because the neighbor just says that that's not allowed that's not allowed and we've been abused we've had them coming into our building and abusing us okay that's the second time uh, okay all right I'm, I'm going to uh okay i'll get you to finish up now all right okay now we understand that in, this is a particularly emotive situation right but we need to keep our decorum, and that, that particularly refers to you, sir, because I think you've made a couple of statements that are uh, pretty hard for people to listen to, to be honest. OK? Thank you. All right. No, that's it. Right. Councillors. All right. Are there any questions of the applicant? Do you have a question, Councillor? Yeah, I've or? got two questions for the applicant. Um, <coughs> one question is the centre running at full capacity in terms of the number of children at the moment? No. Uh, Could you come children? to the lectern, please, sir? How many children at the centre at the moment, and what is the intended number? Well, the children, the permit allows for 110 children, and the plant won't make more noise because the air conditioning is on every day. Whether we have 10 children there or we have 110 children, the air conditioner runs at the same uh, amount. It just runs. And how many children are there at the moment? Are we currently running at 52 or 53 percent? Thank you. Um, and the second question, I just wanted to ask what the rationale was for putting um, the machinery on the only side of the building with close by neighbours. Uh, well, when we designed the play decks, if we had rotated the play decks so that they faced eastwards, there would have been more noise and there would have been more complaints because of the children would have been outside playing during the day. And so the noise would have been greater for the people on the east side than on um, if we had put the planter machinery there. Thank and you. there's nowhere else to put the planter machinery on the site. Okay. Do you yeah. have a question for the yeah, applicant? For the, just um, thank you. Um, can you just, uh, Ms. Billman actually mentioned that the, the need for um, the extended hours to allow parent meetings and, and the maintenance and so on. Can you just give us um, an indication of how regular or irregular those those that those times would be required after the children after those children's hours are finished, please. Well, um, in the last year, um, or in this calendar year, we've had three um, parent evenings uh, during the week, 
and this was to inform the parents of the new childcare legislation and the funding changes. And even though the families had received emails and documents from the government and the various government departments, they still didn't fully understand it. So we had to have three evenings with them where we um, informed them and went through their specific cases. And with those examples on those evenings, um, I believe that we were finished before 8 o'clock and we had vacated the building on those evenings before 8 o'clock. We have had one Saturday um, this year where we've had a, a celebration of our first birthday and it was from about 10 o'clock until 4 o'clock-ish that the, the people were there. Yes, there were some people setting up a bit before that, but that was the animal farm arriving and our staff arriving to set up for the day. Okay. So, so just and just to clarify, Mr. Honeyborn, um, the number of or well, the likely you know, requirement for maintenance on the Sunday. Do you know? Like obviously, that can you give us an indication of how, what the frequency Currently might be? Currently, we that? have to do some maintenance work, and we're trying to do them on the weekends, on a Saturday and a Sunday, so it can be finished as swiftly as possible. Because if we don't work on a Sunday, we have to come back a number of Saturdays, so the work requirement immediately doubles. In the foreseeable future, I think there's going to be another two or three weekends where we'll be there on a Sunday, but that's about it this calendar year. After that, there should be no more noise and, and maintenance work on the Sundays. Okay, any further questions for the applicant? Okay, um, I'm sorry, uh, we're in camera now, yeah, in committee now. All right, councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Riley of is on his freedom frame. Yep. I'd like to move the, um, the mediated motion as circulated to councillors, please, uh, with one slight amendment, and I'm relying on an amendment that was circulated by Councillor Bolton um, with regard to number four. So for the benefit of the audience, <clears throat> the changes that uh, the mediated uh, amendment includes point number five that was clarified in the officer's report, and it includes this new condition that requires the use must be at all times comply with the state environment protection policy. Is, as All right. Okay, there. so is everyone clear? Do we have a second if, if, if everyone's clear on the motion that's being moved? Sorry, Mr. Mayor, can I just, Sorry, just yeah, note what that is? Okay, so, just so we're clear. Yep. So it, um, it's to amend condition 11 to limit the use of Sundays to the centre administration and patient, uh, maintenance only. And at point four, I'd like to add after A, where it says demonstrate compliance with SEP N-1, to add... Um, comma at all times, just to clarify that, and then to add a point C, a further SEP in one report to be produced once child care centre is running at full capacity. It's, 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 I think we've heard through the officer's report that it's implied there, but it's just to make that um, very clear. Okay, so everyone's clear on the motion that's being moved by Councillor Riley, and do we have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Dorney. Would you like to speak to a Councillor Riley? <coughs> Uh, yes, look, thank you um, to all of the um, presentations tonight. Um, I understand the difficulties with it, uh, with this issue. I've been reading emails and hearing uh, about this for some time, so I'm sorry that it, I'm, you know, that it actually has been some um, cause for consternation on both parties, if I can put it that way, the community living there and on the proponents. So I'm hoping that this motion will go some way to clarifying some of the, the issues, particularly around the noise um, and also around the hours of operation that's to try and strike a balance between the hours of operation and the way that we've couched this in the motion is to uh, limit those hours um, beyond 6.30 um, in the evenings um, and on the Saturday so that it's for parent meetings and an occasional event, like you've said, um, like a... a you know, like a, a fate, I guess, or a, as a school teacher, I'm assuming they're the kind of fundraisers you're looking at, and uh, and to allow for Sundays to have centre administration occur in maintenance, and I'm hoping that those kinds of well, the maintenance may cause some noise during the day, um, but it would be quite limited. Um, on as you've said, there might be three more occasions in this financial year uh, where that might occur. Um, I understand people have made statements to the fact that that the location of the uh, the air conditioning units wasn't clear. It was was indicated on the plans. It was just the extent and the uh, degree of those locations weren't clear. And this is what often happens in a planning application. 
Um, many of the things aren't signed off, but they are required under the, the rules. And, um, and if there's been some uh, downfall there, well, what we're trying to do now is to rectify that and to get some clarity in there. So um, obviously that noise has caused some consternation and we're now trying to address that. The SEP, SEPPN1 should uh, make, ensure that the noise levels are quite limited um, and uh, should satisfy people in the surrounding areas. So um, I, I think the, the, the objectors are, are aware of the benefits that that will bring. So I think um, with that, I'm, I might leave the, leave the um, leave my comments. Thank you, Councillor Rowley. Councillor Dorney as a seconder. Would you like to speak to him? I get just for a moment. Uh, I think that yes, we have a um, a very sensitive interface here where we have um, both residential and commercial um, in the one place. I know the challenges that come with that, and I really um, empathise with what I'm hearing tonight. Um, I do think that this report and the work that the officers do with all the evidence that's before me, I uh, believe that, that we are doing what we can to actually meet standards and address the SEP N1 um, requirements with the um, amendments that have been put forward. And it's, it's, it's tough, but I, I think that um, officers really have done the work here and really tried to negotiate the best outcome. Um, I think that, yes, there were some, some fall downs in the previous um, acoustic report. I think that's been addressed. And also, um, if it's you know, not up to standard, when it, once the work is done, then it's going to be um, highlighted there as well and, and further work will need to be done. So I feel satisfied, although um, I understand it, it is tough and it's tough standing up here. I do feel that um, this report um, has and it can to address um, particularly the noise um, complaints and um, try to remediate that to the best ability. I'm sorry, not this point, I'm sorry. Uh, any speakers against the motion? You like to speak against? Yes. Um, could, would it be possible to um, lift, scroll down to point four? That's right, that's right. So um, I'm... Um, tempted to move an amendment, um, but I, I guess I've got an alternative resolution, um, more around the opening hours. Um, so my uh, amendments about the um, CEPN1 noise report um, to be compliant at all times, not just in the daytime, and once the childcare is running at full capacity have been incorporated, so that's um, very good. Um, but I would like some more to see some more boundaries around noise because I sort of feel like um, this is going for broke. Um, I think um, the, the activities that are likely to um, involve a lot of noise would be um, late night meetings. Not, I, I'm totally comfortable with office staff or childcare workers doing some administration after hours. I don't think residents would be upset about that. But the question of um, how many parent and community meetings and staff meetings might happen um, during the week and also on weekends. Um, so I feel that it would be quite... Um, Realistic, and this is in the alternative motion I'd like to move if um, this gets defeated, um, that there only be uh, one uh, staff meetings and training meetings only occur one night per week and parent and community meetings only occur one night per week. Can and I just clarify, Councillor, you doing this as a foreshadowed motion? Sort of a foreshadowed motion, uh, yep, unless the um, yep, move is fine. likely to accept my amendments. Yep. Um, and also for the weekend, for um, Saturday, um, to um, for the uh, staff meetings or community, me community gatherings to only occur twice per month on a Saturday. Um, and then uh, Sunday... Um, well, I'd actually like to see Sunday deleted altogether. Okay, just for, just for clarification, Councillor Bolton will move that motion if this is not successful. If this motion is successful, this will be the motion. Otherwise, I'm taking uh, understanding what you're saying, Councillor, and you'll move that as a foreshadowed motion. 
Okay. Uh, thank you for that, Councillor. Uh, are there any other speakers on this item? Councillor Steele, yes. Um, Saturday, Sunday, is it true that there's only three events run per year? Um, that's what they've done this that's I think that's what the applicant said has happened on this year. Is that but it has had other events, times right? where people have been employed at that time working in the centre. Yeah, the aircons are still on. Right, okay. Where I'm used for okay. the process. All right. The kids aren't there with the aircon still. Okay. All right. So right. Really I'm sorry, I'll have to stop you there. All right, thank you. All right, okay. Uh, any other questions or contributions? <coughs> okay, so I'm gonna Put the item that was moved by Councillor Raleigh, seconded by Councillor Dorney. If this is successful, this is the motion that will be uh, agreed to. Otherwise, we'll move to Councillor Bolton's alternative. All right, so we're going to put that now. All those in favour? Against? Okay, declare that carried, and we'll move to the officer to find out the next steps. Thank you. So. The um, Urban Planning Committee has uh, decided to <coughs> resolve to grant an amended planning permit uh, in relation to the uh, alternate <coughs> motion that's just been discussed. That notice will be sent to all objector parties and the <coughs> permit applicants. Uh, objector parties will be provided with 28 days from receipt of that notice to object that to the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal. Likewise, the permit applicant has 60 days in which they have the ability to contest that at the tribunal, any of the conditions that have been put on tonight. I'm Thank sorry, I, I couldn't hear after that. Okay, um, you'll be. We've, we've granted a, a, an alternative recommendation, which to grant a permit with stronger conditions than what were that was on the officer report. You will be. You will receive a copy of that, and from and then you'll have 28 days if you wish to object uh, to take it to the Civil and Administrative Tribunal after that. But you'll see that the, co the copy you will receive will have all the conditions that have, pla that have been placed on tonight. Okay. You have a question, I'll let him. Sorry, it's hard to read. It is hard what to read. The, the the okay. It was the one that Councillor Riley put forward uh, with a whole uh, a range of changes. Um, well, we'll have to wait for the... Yeah, it will yep. be detailed in the notice of decision. Yep. It will be detailed when you, as an objector, you will receive a copy of that. Understand. Okay. What's that? Say that again. Yeah. Would you better do that? Would you better? Look, the officer is prepared to walk out with you and give you a bit of a, a, a summary of what's happened. All right. Okay. Is that okay, Darren? Thank you. You're not moving the next item. You're not uh, presenting the next item. Thank you. All right. Good, good solution. Okay. We're going to go to the next report of the evening now. DED 5718, 22 to 26, Albert Street, Brunswick East. And we'll just give a moment for people to leave. <laughs> Okay, we're going to move to the next item now. Okay, uh, thank you, Mark. Thank you, councillors. Um, I'm Mark Hughes, one of the planning coordinators at Moreland. I'm presenting the item for 22, 24 and 26 Albert Street in Brunswick East. Um, it's a request to approve a development plan. Um, you can see the site on the screen there, an aerial image. The site's um, highlighted in blue. The planning controls that affect this site, it's within a mixed use zone, it's within a development plan overlay schedule number 11, it's in a parking overlay, design and development overlay, environmental order overlay, and a development contribution plan overlay. A little bit more on the zoning. The surrounding area is mixed. So there's some single storey housing, there's some new townhouses, apartments, and there's some older commercial industrial buildings as well. To the rear of the site is the East Brunswick Village and on the screen there I've just got some basic images of what's been approved to the rear of the site. 
Um, the direct interface to the rear is going to have a building between three to five storeys. The proposal um, seeks approval for a development plan. A development plan sets the planning controls for the site and will inform how a future development um, may be developed. The development plan is wholly residential. It will be divided into three three-storey buildings with roof deck. There is pedestrian access off um, Albert Street and there's rear laneway access for parking. One thing I should also say is informal notice was undertaken. There was one submission received from the neighbour to the, to the west. Um, concerns raised was an unbounded wall and height. The recommendation, which is detailed from pages 25 of tonight's agenda, um, seeks to advise the tribunal of council's position in this matter, that we support the development plan with some changes to the envelopes. The changes seek to increase um, front side and rear setbacks, um, some clarity on the height, some guidance around how roof terraces may be developed, some protection around potential amenity impacts from nearby industrial uses, um, amongst other things. All right, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So are there any submitters that would like to speak? I think we're ahead most. Yes, sir. Please come forward to the lectern and thanks for coming. Um, I own and live at 28 Albert Street. Uh, I've lived there for 16 years since purchasing it in 2002. Um, I'm 61 years of age, self-employed, and uh, it has been my intention to remain living at the property in my retirement. Uh, first, I'd like to offer some comments in relation to the proposed development at 22 and 26 uh, Albert Street. And um, uh, and then I've got a comment yeah. about the boundary yeah. between my property and the uh, and the development. Um, in regard to the nature of the development, uh, and uh, a picture was shown there of the three uh, proposed um, three-storey buildings. Uh, it appears to me. This is a picture of the development at 20 Albert Street. Now, as you can see, this is, these are actually dwelling units, and you can see there that the entire allotment is taken up with dwelling units. Now, um, the, um, the plans that we've saw, seen there, although they're not specific, appear to have this sort of idea, namely filling up all of the space aside, apart from a driveway down each side and with uh, access to garages just like this sort of design. Now, I would say that this is a, an example of brutalist architecture and, uh, in fact, I've travelled in East Germany shortly after the Iron Curtain came down and I could say that uh, even the most austere socialist concrete uh, uh, apartment blocks were not as ugly as this. Now, on the other hand, I want to say that at 30 Albert Street, we have this dwelling here, this high-rise dwelling. It's also three storeys. And uh, so this one has some space around the... the um, uh, around the units. This one here is all about sort of maximising the amount of dwelling and indeed the amount of ugliness that you can squeeze into the planning envelope. So my main point is that uh, the development should not be permitted to be like that. It should only be permitted, be permitted to be of this form. Because otherwise what you're doing is you're just transforming Albert Street into one of the ugliest streets in Melbourne. Um, the second point about this proposed dwelling is because it has no open spaces within the site itself, unlike this one here, which has open space around the units, because the proposed developments have no open 
sites. What they're proposing to do is have a terrace on top that will, will take the whole top of the building and be fenced around and presumably, although I don't know, just speculating, with shading uh, and so on on top. So essentially, irrespective of, of whether there's roofing and shading, it is essentially a fourth storey. And whether or not that is inconsistent strictly by the letter of the planning scheme, I would say it's definitely inconsistent with the intent of the planning scheme. Um, now, I've also put in my submission that there is a wall currently between my house and the proposed... I'm giving you a bit of extra time because you're the only submitter, but I'll give just another minute or so, please, sir. Wrap it up. No, no, it can take another minute or All so. Right. Uh, there's a wall, it's, it's the factory wall, uh, between my dwelling and the site, and I've suggested I, it would be uh, desirable if it was at least if it was retained and at least two to three metres high to provide me with some privacy from these uh, flats. Of course, the council has already approved the five-storey east, um, uh, east Brunswick, um, Brunswick, Village. Brunswick Village behind. And I was uh, lastly, I just wanted to say that I was quite upset to be told by planning staff that all the planning done in relation to the east Brunswick Village, and indeed in relation to this new, prop new property development, uh, have been based on the assumption that my property and the house next door would be redeveloped as multi-storey apartment block. Okay. Well, um, I've got two comments about that. Firstly, um, it's fictitious because my house and the house beside me are residential houses where uh, the allotments are not large enough for multi-storey individually to be developed as multi-storey block allotments. So the only way they could be is if both owners sold. I know my my own my neighbour doesn't have any plans to do so, and uh, so in fact, within the next within the foreseeable future, within for a long time, that is not going to be what's going to happen. And lastly. I felt that that assumption that was made is quite brutal because basically what it means is that uh, we've been completely, our interests have been completely disregarded and um, uh, we've basically, well, ultimately been planned out of existence and been told to go and live somewhere else. Okay. No, thank you very much. Thank you for making the submission. Thanks for, you know, it takes a thank lot you. when you're the only submitter in particular and I admire the courage. Thank you. All right, thanks. Mm. Do we have a representative of the applicant? Oh, sorry. Yes, you may. Nick. Um, yes, apologies, Nick Dolby, Holbrook Crescent, West Brunswick. Um, my mother lives near here. Um, uh, I'll be brief. I'm a bit feeling a bit bolshy and I'm feeling chaotic. I'm tilting at windmills. Chaotic? This, yeah, yeah, chaotic. Don Quixote. Oh, this, Don was, Quixote. Uh, this was um, okay. a place of work. It is being redeveloped as a residential site only. I wish that it was possible that it included a place of work within the development, that it included a commercial aspect to the development. That's all I've got to say. Thank you, Don Quixote. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, do we have a representative of the applicant? How are you guys? Going well, um, thanks. That's good. Um, yes, sir. Former employee. Yeah, yes, yes. Um, so, yeah, just thought I'd come along tonight just to put a face to the application. Um, uh, probably the main thing that I would like to say is that this is currently a VCAT application, so it's currently right. a VCAT. Um, but what we have done is, um, during the process, we've continued to talk with Council um, and to resolve um, a number of issues that Council did originally raise. Um, and what we've done is we've We've probably done you guys a favour by um, giving an opportunity to, to review the actual application and to come up with um, a list of conditions that would better suit or that you guys would be happy with. Um, and we've agreed to do that and we've vacated the date on the 3rd of October. Um, so, um, so we've done that in good faith. Um, so we do get a win-win result. So. Uh, we're requesting that you guys approve it tonight. If not, then we're going to be going to the, the full hearing, which is going to be at a later date. 
Um, also, in regards to the objector, um, we received the objection yesterday, and um, another reason why we're here tonight is just to, we will work with him. Um, it's probably we need to investigate just a bit more in regards to the wall, whether or not he's got a wall on his side or he's depending on our wall for the structure of his building. But um, we'll uh, get in contact with him and try and work that out. But I don't think it's a planning matter. Of course. Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay, any questions for the applicant? Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Councillor Riley. Uh, my questions were really probably from an officer, perhaps, but to maybe the applicant can comment on this um, uh, regarding the fact that this is a development plan, so a lot of the detail isn't provided in this, which is quite evident, I think, from the objectors. I mean, the objectors have notified that, and thank you for acknowledging that there isn't a lot of the detail there um, as to why you perhaps think it might be so brutal. But um, if, I'm just wondering if you can comment on how that works and how you, um, how that might, uh, as a proponent, and, uh, so how the, it articulates with the community in the area, because the whole East Brunswick Village is, is set up with a development plan, and it causes quite a bit of confusion in the community's mind. Many people don't understand planning to start with. And then you kind of do this and then take it to VCAT and complicate it a little bit further. You're not actually doing me a favour by taking to VCAT. No. But if you could just clarify... I'm glad you made that point. ..why, yeah. why you're doing that so and what, how what? you... Okay. How, under, those, under those schemes, under these schemes of development plans, how do you engage with the community? Because it makes our job much more difficult as councillors. So what the development plan is, it's it's what you've seen, the plans that were up on the slide before. It's like a massing diagram. So our client owns number 22 and 26 Albert Street. Number 24 is owned by someone else. So what, that, what those massing diagrams show is that those three properties can be developed in a certain way. And what we've done is we haven't just plucked numbers out of it anywhere. We've used the actual guidelines from the uh, residential growth zone, which we thought, or you know, everyone, we all thought that they're, they're the relevant um, like benchmark. So we have used the dimensions in regards to primary outlooks and setbacks um, that are that are like a significant or considered appropriate in the in the growth zone. We've used it uh, with this application as well. So that's where we've got um, that's where we've got the actual setbacks and created those massing diagrams. So if you have a look, you can see that there's two that are kind of joined together and one's further apart. So that leaves areas for uh, primary outlooks and balconies and so forth. So it's not just all one, one okay. big mass. Thank you. And you have another question, yeah. Councillor? Uh, thank you. Um, so just can you clarify for the sake of the, the community here this evening in the gallery and people watching online, what's the, what's the situation regarding open space and landscaping? Because quite clearly you do have the setbacks. You've got two and three metre setbacks. Um, from the building, but can you just explain for the purposes of your neighbours and others that are interested, what's the story with open space and landscaping, please? I know you've got landscaping plans in there, but can you explain it to the people who are here this evening? So, um, as far as open space goes, the dwelling topography is a reverse living dwelling. Um, we're in Brunswick Activity Centre where that type of dwelling is appropriate and it's um, kind of in demand at the moment. So that means that we've got balcony private open space or terrace private open space, which is on the upper levels. Um, in regards to landscaping, we've got setbacks from, if you look at the site plan, from the front setback and side setbacks and in the driveway areas where um, it's, it's set aside just for landscaping. So the building envelope that we've got, although it's not, um, it hasn't got the detail of, of, the, of the actual dwellings, it does provide uh, areas for landscaping and the driveways and, and so forth and where the balconies are positioned to have an outlook. So it's kind of, um, that massing diagram is actually, it's probably a bit more, so when we do design the actual units, we have to stick to that. So we can't go out. So it's kind of like a, um, it's like a guideline, it's like a- Out, Outer limit? Would it be the outer limit? Yeah, yeah, so acceptable? we can't encroach that. No. Whereas if, if we didn't have that building envelope, then we could probably go to the boundary in some ways or kind of get bigger or, you know, have a, have a higher uh, building height. Um, 
And some of the conditions that um, the council has put on there, the planning officer has put on there, um, kind of ensures that we do uh, stick to those those setbacks okay. in regards to the height, um, primary outlooks, and there's even one about the front setback. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Okay, thank you. I think that's the end of the questioning, I think. Oh, just one more. Sorry. One more. Yeah. One more. Right. So does that mean there'll be other more specific plans coming to the community yeah. and to us? So it's important, I think, for people to understand there will be another iteration, I believe, yes? Yes, yeah, so this is just uh, like a, yeah. a map showing that... I get this. I'm just wanting you to explain it to our community. That's... I mean, not, you know, in general, because think, it's just important because to, it's a bit confusing. I think we might have to meet up and talk yeah. about your wall. So thank we can you. talk a bit more about everything no else. Okay. Thanks. And I'm not allowed to comment, am I? No, I don't think so. I think I just want to count comment on the council. No, it's all right. No, we'll leave it. I'm sorry. All right. I'm going to give you. Thank you. You may sit down. All right. I think we've had enough of the discussion, I think. All right. Okay. All right. Councillors, do I have a motion? Yes. Yes, Councillor Rowley. After all of that, I will move the officer's recommendation as presented. I just thought it was important to get some of those issues across. Hang on, um, just before you speak to it, I'll just check we've got a seconder. That's uh, Officer Recommendation, Councillor Booth. Yeah, Thanks. go for it, Councillor Riley. Um, I do believe this is, you know, setting up a, it can be quite complicated, um, and the development plans do create an extra level of um, uh, setting up some of the, the grounds in which you're going to move, the development will come from here. So there will be an opportunity for further detailed plans to come back to for, and hopefully you'll keep an idea, an eye on the project and, and hear about that. But the East Brunswick Village is set up on a similar plan and there is another development on the John Street corner which is on tonight's agenda which is also being set up under a similar development plan but it does create an extra level of complexity for people who aren't familiar with planning. Um, I, I do believe um, the heights of this uh, development at 11 metres high and um, three storeys is uh, fits in with the kind of um, proposals that are coming to this area, and uh, and as you said, um, meeting the, the sort of the growth zone um, expectations as a guideline. Um, the setbacks and so on, I think, are important. Um, Albert Street's a very narrow street. There aren't a lot of street trees in the street, and there are a lot of pressures on that street. But I um, <coughs> just would like to draw the proponents um, in speaking to this, that there has been a project in that street to get more trees planted in people's front yards. So I'm very pleased to hear that you've got the setbacks there because we are trying to get more trees growing that street and given the urban heat island effects, that's a really important issue. Um, I'm hoping that the roof design might allow for some of those things in the future as well. So I think um, I'm going to leave it at that. The, the motion is- um, Thank you, Councillor Riley. Councillor Boone, did you want to speak to it? Any other speakers? Okay, being no further speakers, we're going to put this to the vote. All those in favour? Against? Declare that carried. Can I go to the officer for next steps, please? Thank you, Council. So, Council's resolved to support the recommendation in the agenda. This means that officers will write to the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal and advise that Council will support the development plan with amendments. The outcome of this meeting will also inform the submitter as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Now, the next report this evening, councillors, is DED 5818, 102 to 106 John Street, East Brunswick, development plan. Can I uh, move uh, to the officers to present their report? <coughs> Thank you, councillors. The uh, third item for this evening is an application uh, similar to uh, the previous application uh, for a development plan of 102 to 106 John Street. So this site is uh, to the west, or probably a couple of hundred metres to the west of uh, the previously uh, a uh, reported uh, site uh, that Mark presented. As you can see in the aerial photo, um, uh, that was uh, 22 Albert Street. This is a subject site we're talking about, so 102 to 106 uh, 
uh, John Street, it's about 2,500 square metres, um, and uh, as you can see, it's relationship to the East Brunswick Village. The proposal for this site, Council, is uh, obviously, again, it's a development plan. It's proposing uh, three, a three-storey terrace-type development at 106 John Street. 106 is at the top end of the site, and a five-storey apartment development at 102 and 104 John Street which could potentially accommodate approximately 18 to 20 dwellings. It has a staggered setback to John Street, uh, construction to the boundary to Elm Grove. So Elm Grove is along the eastern side of the site, and a two metre setback to Albert Street, so consistent with the 20 to 22 Albert Street proposal. So the subject site, mixed use zone, uh, it's commercial, uh, partly mixed use, partly commercial one zone, <coughs> environmental audit overlay over the site, uh, and obviously the overlay, as we've spoken about, those uh, photo montages up there provided by the applicant indicate the existing conditions of the site. Uh, as I understand, the, uh, uh, the warehouses are currently vacant at this point in time. Uh, some photos of uh, the uh, surrounding sites. So the uh, top left-hand corner is uh, the subject site taken from the corner of Albert Street and John Street. Uh, on the right hand side of the page, we have the Albert Apartments that's uh, immediately opposite to the west of the subject site, and 40 to 42 Albert Street, which is immediately east of the subject site. In terms of the proposed building envelope, uh, as you'll see in the, uh, uh, on the left hand side, you've got the ground floor plan. So the proposed <coughs> is, uh, the building envelope that extends all the way to the western boundary with the two metre setback off Albert Street. We then have a staggered setback, so it steps back to one and a half metres. Uh, for uh, that site we just shown as 102 to 106 John Street before stepping further back to three metres. Uh, and as you see as you go up, uh, it's proposed to be a, a continuous built pool going up to each level. The massing diagram in the bottom corner, uh, it's a little hard to see, councillors, but again, it, it shows the massing of, of the proposed development in relation to uh, approved development around the site. The proposal provides active street frontages to both Albert Street and John Street. Uh, there's vehicular access off Albert Street for the proposed terraces and <laughs> access off John Street <coughs> for the apartment building. There's two vehicle access points to John Street. Uh, part of the recommendation councillors is to consolidate that into a single access point. <laughs> Public consultation occurred. Uh, 508 parties were notified, of which uh, three submissions were received. Um, Obviously, traffic uh, and car parking were a common concern. Uh, the other concern, which obviously uh, companies development means, is the limited information we have available. Um, so a bit of ambiguity in what was actually proposed. In terms of the recommendation, um, some of the key issues, obviously, building, building envelope, building height, and car parking. So with the building envelope, we're proposing to increase the setback to John Street. Um, so uh, basically, uh, achieving a three metre setback for the um, entire apartment building. So that red part there, basically bringing the building back in. Um, and also altering the building face of the terrace to the north. Matching the building height so that the overall building height matches uh, the site to the immediate south of 100 John Street. In terms of car parking, as I mentioned, delete one of the crossovers to Elm Grove. Um, and each one of the uh, apartment uh, parking is in the, in the basement car park. Thank you, councillors. Thank you very much, Robert. Uh, are there any submitters or objectors who'd like to speak? Yes, please, come forward. Uh, yes, I'm uh, going to read our little presentation uh, on behalf of the owner of 42 Alma Street. Unfortunately, he's way overseas at the moment. And uh, he's been dealing extensively with the council officers and I think um, got a great good grasp on the detail. I think we understand it is going to VCAT, so it's really not going to be, you know, there's a lot more discussion to occur. Mm -hmm. We understand it's a development plan, so we know there's a lot more discussion to occur. However, the owner of the house is at 42 Albert Street, and I'll just read this out briefly. Our house is a single storey dwelling that will be surrounded by multi storey apartments. It is essential that the council officers present a strong case to VCAT 
and that the amenity of the existing residents be protected. So we have got that sort of arrangement of a single house that's got an abuttle on two sides. So it is that sort of interface between uh, development opportunities for developers, but then there is the sitting houses that sit clearly in that area. So I think that uh, you know, the proposed development will create major issues for us in terms of overshadowing and overlooking, and the bill form will impose a massive structure on our rear boundary that will completely dominate the house. The proposals also contain a number of clear ambiguities that must be addressed, and I think we've taken that up with the council officers. They're aware of it, and I think they've been represented with some of the conditions that have been uh, presented uh, in the report and uh, coming up with the uh, recommendations. Um, what there is, because there's ambiguities, there is a risk the developer will choose a design that's most advantageous for the developer. So what we've got to be very careful about, the devil is in the detail. It's got to be a fair assessment that occurs. So we need to remove ambiguity on these things. For example, the current proposals likely will have a high level of vehicle traffic, which is shown in red, immediately along our western boundary. The Council Officers report has covered a number of the specific issues we have raised with them. Our comments are table. What we'd like to do is we'd like to continue our discussions with Council. We'd also be interested to discuss with councillors how that we can engage with the developers, because there's two of it. It's a sort of, why are we actually going to VCAT? It's because a decision hasn't been made, so it's become a question of time. When I think there probably is an issue that you can probably resolve a lot of the development plan without having to go through the issues of uh, VCAT. So I'm sort of uh, nominating, um, and I think I'm talking uh, probably completely out of school for the owners, but I know them well enough. If there is an opportunity to try and resolve some of these issues now, try and get a better engagement, but I think also set the groundwork for where the devil is in detail is the interface on those two boundaries. What's the quality of the architecture? What's the quality of the materiality that's going to occur? What are the noise? What are the setbacks? Does it look interesting from the back garden? Are we shielded? And I think that's the sort of, this is the first stage. We understand there's got to be a second stage. But I think there's an opportunity here for the developer to become a little bit more engaging, not have it toughed out of VCAT, because I can tell you, I'll probably be helping uh, at VCAT, and I've got a reasonable track record of uh, going through and doing this, but we don't want to do that. We want to see if there's an opportunity to engage. So uh, that's an offer that's been made, and I think we've got to be very careful, especially when you look at that with an abuttal on two sides for the long-term general amenity. And also, you don't want to set a precedent where a development plan, and then what occurs, you end up by a harsh cutback environment because they are secondary boundaries. They're not on the streetscape that they are on the side boundaries, they are on the rear boundaries. And I think we've got to be careful about that. So we want to see that we still continue working with the council officers, which we do appreciate. But we also want to see if there's an opportunity to meet further so that we're supportive of each other. Oh, that's good that matter. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for that. Any yeah. other objectors like to speak? Yes, Nick. Yeah, sorry, apologies. Uh, Nick Dolby, Holbrook Crescent. My mum lives near this address. Um, again, this is a place of employment. I regret that the planning provisions have changed to the extent that this no longer provides any realis uh, realistic employment in this place. Yes, there may be nannies. Yes, there may be cleaners, servile, low-paid, casual jobs. But this area should have a commercial development within the site. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Any other objectives like to speak? Is there a representative of the applicant? Yes, please. Thank you, uh, Mr Chairman, for the opportunity to, uh, to make a presentation this evening. My name is Damien Blocknan. I'm from G2 Urban Planning and representing the, um, the proponent, Roden Street Propriety Limited. Um, what I would say is this is one of the last sites in John Street, the majority of, uh, of John Street being taken up by the EBV um, development plan. Um, there's been a range of detailed requirements that have been specified and um, I've met with the council planner, Jackie Burnoff, and to commence discussions about a number of the requirements. And I would say that whilst the uh, application has been lodged to VCAT, we are in agreement with the bulk of those matters. So I would say that there will just be a small area that um, we would be looking at refining um, as part of the, uh, the VCAT hearing. <coughs> um, and a number of the matters that we would say, or I would say would be commonly agreed, would relate to those very interfaces, to the 
um, uh, to the east and the north, which is the 42 Albert Street. Um, uh, to the west of 42 Albert Street, it's a three-storey built form and there's a, a garage separating. So built form will be pushed away from that, that property, just as one would have in a, a villa unit type development, I guess. And also to the rear of number 42, if you can see on the plan that there is a, uh, I guess, a cutback that has been shown, which um, provides a substantial recess at the very rear. That will be continuing above ground level. Um, now, the, one of the, the conditions that has been proposed, which is condition uh, 2D, refers to um, the plans modified to provide an interface treatment. And um, we um, do, certainly do not shy away from that, that we need to have respect for those interfaces and further work can be done on that in consultation with, uh, with Council's planner. So I will be meeting with Council's planner, Jackie Burnoff, prior to the, 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 um, the VCAT hearing to go through these matters um, further. Um, now, I guess the further thing that I would say is that this is, of course, a development plan process. We have pr provided um, the documentation um, with council for some time in the belief that it was responding to the development plan overlay and also acknowledging that council as the responsible authority of course will be specifying detailed requirements as part of the planning permit application so we believe that those sort of conditions should give uh, adequate comfort in further refining the development plan with council of course having further uh, control of the planning permit um, process stage thank you Thank you. Just stay there for a moment. Is there any questions for the applicant? Yes, Deputy Mayor. Um, yes. I'm interested to know if you've had any indication um, from the people who uh, put in the application about the comments that, sorry, I've forgotten your name. Simon. Um, Simon? Simon. That Simon put forward about um, having a conversation with the neighbours about what uh, the detail might look like. Yes. Often, when things go down a different process, we have what's known as a PID, a uh, public information discussion, which is like this but without any of the heat in the room where the two parties can have a conversation about what each of them can live with. Yes. Um, so, I'm interested to know if you think there's an opportunity for that to happen. Well, yes, absolutely. And certainly, we, we would encourage that. I would say actually that the owner of 42, Mr Dixon, actually contacted my office uh, around about May, June or, or thereabouts and actually asked about the possibility of representation for a development plan being prepared for his site. Um, and we, I spoke with him at length on the phone for about 10 or 15 minutes about his site and what that might, might require. Um, he didn't have anything to say about our particular development plan. Um, and um, we endeavoured to provide a fee proposal to him for his site. So that was the only level of contact. But yes, of course, we'd be uh, willing to, to speak with people. Thank you very much. And just one more. Yeah. Um, you might want to take this as a comment, but I guess what I'm, I'm hoping is acknowledged is the fact that, sure, he might have consulted with you about potentially developing his own property as well, but that would probably be a response to the fact that his alternatives are being squeezed out or creating something that he thinks he can live with. And so I'm just, um, you know, looking forward to either way, sure, he walks away and his property is developed or there is a fruitful conversation between the developer and uh, the applicants mm -hmm. and, the, and the residents of the neighbourhood. Well, yeah, I, I'd encourage the, 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 the owner to, to contact our office, absolutely, and either meet at our office or together with council after the 15th of October when Jackie Burnoff returns from her leave. Thank you. Okay, yes. thank you. Fantastic. Uh, any other questions of the applicant? That's yes. a question of the officer. Of the officer, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, just If we could just have some clarity. Was this actually affected the previous application and I should have raised it then, but I'd just for the public record I'd like to have clarity around 3B, please, because it's to do with the drop forge um, okay, so having continuing use. Yes, yeah, so it, mm -hmm. it so further complicates what okay. the timing of when so things the happen. officer report has a condition 3B and uh, we'd like to have a bit of clarification around that. The drop forge. Yes. Councillors. Uh, yes, look, the purpose, the purpose of that is uh, really about the acoustic uh, issues associated with the, the drop forge. So it's basically ensuring that the drop forge um, has uh, ceased uh, 
operation. I mean, it has closed, but it still has existing use rights. So we need to wait two years until those uh, use rights uh, expire. Um, after that, then it's guaranteed that we'll be able to re-establish on the site, um, at which, top, which point we think it's appropriate for this uh, use to commence. Thank you. All right. Uh, councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Rowley. I would like to move the officer's report recommendation as okay. put. And do we have a, we have a seconder for the officer recommendation? Councillor Martin. Councillor Riley, would you like to speak to it? Yes, yeah, just briefly. Um, obviously, uh, similar comments to before about this being a development plan, so a lot of the, the specificity and the de design detail will come later. Um, and it just further complicates things for community in terms of the processes. Um, and again, with the uh, butting use rights for um, the, the Drop Forge um, site, that it actually means that they can continue to work there even though they've closed up. They could reopen and uh, would further complicate matters there. Um, and I concur with the issues that have been raised around the house to the west of the site at number 42. Um, but notwithstanding that, we. Um, I'm a bit disappointed that this has had to go to VCAP, but I understand that the timing on that is much shorter than it would be for a normal application. I believe that's the case. Is that right? That these development plans get have to be produced much more quickly. Is that correct? Um, yeah, the statutory time period is 28 days rather than the 60 days for a Yeah, which seems application. ironic when there's a you know another business nearby it could have another two years to run. But um, I'm sure you want to line things up. So. Um, in that respect, um, I think the setbacks, the requirement for tree planting and other matters that have been detailed here um, go a long way to addressing some of the issues for this site. Um, the fact that the parking may be reduced in future is something that's important to me as a South Ward councillor and with all the pressures with traffic and parking. Um, um, that's not a requirement in this, but it is something that can happen. Um, the bike parking is welcome. Um, we'd like to, see, because of good access to public transport and so on, and the pressures on John Street, the fact that it's a bike shimmy, we'd like to see um, as few cars going into this area as possible because there's, there's, there's a huge pressure with the EBV site next door. So um, as a council in that area, I'm more than interested to see those kinds of measures implemented, particularly with our, our revised, more than integrated transport strategy, which is being um, work, worked at the moment. Well, it's a revised, a revision of our in, uh, transport strategy it's in draft form at the moment. But even the current MITS is seeking to see more active transport uh, shift happening. So um, that's in line with the current MITS as well, in my, in my view. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Councillor Martin, did you want to speak to it? Um, just really briefly, um, I'm not going to repeat what's already been said. Um, I think it's, it's quite clear that, you know, this is not our preferred way of engaging with the community. Um, we would like, um, you know, to go through these um, other processes because it does um, allow for that better engagement um, and it's less confusing for residents. Um, nobody likes having to talk about uh, non-detailed plans at VCAT um, before, you know, going through all the other um, hurdles at a later date. I would like to um, acknowledge, though, um, one section in the report which... I, um, I really do uh, enjoy uh, reading and I'd like to draw everyone's attention to it. It's on page 54 um, of the agenda and it is actually 5C um, and I, I would like to commend officers on this one for really what is um, removing uh, pretty much all of the weasel words um, out of the ESD report, um, wording to be replaced and I'll, I'll just... Um, highlight some of those words. So natural ventilation, uh, instead of the word should, will be replaced with the word will. Um, site renewable energy generation, uh, instead of the words may be explored, required wording will be, will be included. Um, things like daylight um, should be facilitated, will be facilitated. Um, looking at uh, some of the other things, including say construction waste target of 70% being replaced with 90%. Um, I believe that this is, um, is really great to see um, our officers picking up on this um, stuff because this is really some of the stuff that we've been pushing um, as a council uh, and, and it is really great to see some of this stuff coming through uh, through the planning reports. So I would like to commend officers in their work um, and in their detail um, on this report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Are there any other speakers on this report? Being no further speakers, I'm going to put it at the vote.
All those in favour? Against, declare that carried. So, next steps. Thanks, Robert. Thank you, councillors. Um, the, the council this evening have uh, determined to support the development plan subject to the conditions contained in the recommendation as this matter is going to VCAT. Um, council will be notifying VCAT, uh, the applicant and objective parties uh, of its position before VCAT um, and that recommendation will be put before the tribunal. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. The next report this evening is DED 5918, 1 Home Street, Brunswick East. And, and 53 Albert Street, Brunswick, planning permit application, MPS 200495A. And is that you again, Robert? It is. All right, thank you. Whenever you're ready, just send the officer report. Thank you, councillors and members of the gallery. The uh, fourth item for this evening is an application at number one, Holm Street, 53 Albion Street, Brunswick. Uh, it's part of the McDonald's site, but what it actually proposes is to incorporate 53 Albion Street uh, into, um, into the subject site uh, to basically provide uh, an additional queuing bay or uh, order point uh, for the McDonald's drive through uh, ultimately removing uh, vehicle queuing off Albion Street and moving it into the site. Um, it also involves an amendment to the landscape plan to introduce additional planting to uh, the Dunstan Avenue frontage and demolition of the existing vacant and unused buildings. The subject site, um, certain residential growth, uh, there is an environmental order overlay over the site. Uh, if we, uh, the bottom right hand corner, that's basically standing out in Albion Street at the front of the site, looking uh, the footpath to the left hand side is leading up to Dunstan Avenue, on the right hand side is the entrance to the car park at <coughs> McDonald's. Uh, at the top of the site is looking in the south easterly direction from the top corner of the site. So at the moment there's an existing vehicle crossover to the site, that vehicle crossover will be removed as part of this proposal. So there will be no access to the McDonald's site by Dunstan Avenue. Uh, the, uh, just uh, to note that the site, uh, uh, the uh, 53 Albion Street, was identified in uh, an early uh, heritage study of Ligon Street, uh, but it hasn't been recommended to be included in the heritage study that's underway. It's not uh, identified as being of a place of uh, potential heritage significance. In terms of the context, so Dunstan uh, Avenue is a residential street, predominantly single story. Um, and then uh, as we go south of the subject site, you basically enter into a commercial precinct. Immediately opposite the subject site is the former Lyndhurst Club Hotel, uh, which I believe is currently occupied by Dan Murphy's. This is the uh, subject site. So uh, the existing conditions uh, on the site, um, and it shows basically the relationship between the Proposed site, 53 Albion Street, and the existing McDonald's site. And basically, what we have uh, proposed now, so as mentioned, there will be a new uh, order point put in. So, at the present vehicles queue um, along this line, um, which leads in peak times for queuing, uh, leads to queuing on Albion Street. Creating this second uh, order point enables vehicles to queue within the site, minimising uh, traffic congestion on the street. Is it two additional car parking spaces proposed as well? That's for staff. There is also um, part of the landscape plan. Uh, there's a, an acoustic wall about 15 metres in uh, length proposed, 2.5 metres high, brick, uh, solid brick construction along the northern boundary, boundary of 53 Albion, and returning around the corner to the western boundary. McDonald's to pro, uh, provide uh, amenity protection to the residential property. There is no acoustic uh, fence proposed along the western boundary of the subject site to Dunstan Avenue. Instead, the applicant has proposed uh, lily hillies and a combination of other, other landscape types. In terms of other aspects of the landscape plan, just worth mentioning. Uh, Concerns from objectors uh, through the planning process were vehicles leave, exiting the site outside of the, other than by the designated exit points. Uh, as a consequence of the, uh, uh, the PID, PID that was held uh, back in July, 
the applicant came back with an amended landscape plan to provide boulders in the landscape areas to prevent exit vehicles exiting the site other than by the nominated exit points, access points. There were 19 objections to the application. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the exit, ex, exiting from the site other than by the nominated uh, access points was a key issue. Um, obviously, uh, the acoustic treatments along the western boundary was another concern, uh, potentially increased traffic uh, and impact on the residential land. The recommendation uh, that officers are putting to council this evening is to make a decision for our planning permit the issue uh, with modifications uh, to the landscape uh, area on the western boundary, so it's increased in width to, to a metre, um, and there's some additional structure is provided along 53 Albion Street. Thank you, councillors. <coughs> Thank you, Robert. Are there any objectors who would like to speak? Yes, please, sir. Thank you, councillor. Uh, I'm Tim Glanville. I'm representing about 15 objectors here tonight, uh, concentrated around Dunstan Avenue, but also Home Street. I'm also representing the local community group, which has quite a number of members. When a McDonald's establishes itself in an area, there are continuing problems for the neighbourhood. These problems include litter, wrapping paper, half full drink containers, food scraps, odours, graffiti, vandalism and dangerous driving. Uh, this uh, McDonald's uh, opened in 1997 and our neighbourhood has been subject to all of these problems for 20 years. There is currently a low wall uh, bordering Home Street and Albion Street. Uh, the applicants are proposing its removal and this will uh, increase uh, these problems that I've mentioned, especially the problem of litter, which will not be contained uh, to the degree that it is at the moment. What we'll have as a result of this proposal will be a scatter of gravel and wood chips, wrappings, food scraps, etc., on the footpath and the roads. Now, uh, you'll see that uh, McDonald's are making play of its litter patrols, and uh, we've heard the story of litter patrols for 20 years, and that's what it is a story. It's a fairy tale. Uh, the 100 metres limit for the litter patrols is totally inadequate. I'm sure you'll know that most of the customers of McDonald's <coughs> are vehicular and uh, what they do is they drive to a, a location which may be a little bit remote and that's where uh, they'll throw their rubbish out. Uh, particular sites are the entrance to the park in Mitchell Street but also around the corner in Mitchell Street. But you'll find McDonald's litter widespread in this area. Um, now, uh, the litter patrols generally don't take place. Uh, they do take place for short periods, such as when the complaints for the neighbourhood reach a crescendo, and they also take place when McDonald's are asking for a liberalisation of their permit. Such a time would be now, so we may see some litter patrols uh, in the current period or shortly, uh, but generally they don't take place and they've been promised to us for 20 years. Um, in fact, the one point I would make about litter patrols in, the, in continually proposing them, <coughs> McDonald's are actually conceding that litter is a real problem. Now, we also have concern, as has been mentioned, that vehicles will drive through the plantation now that there's no longer a wall. Um, and uh, we, as the immediate neighbours, and there's a number of people here who confirm this, we regularly see... You've just gone see, three minutes. I'll give you another minute, sir. Thank please. you. We rarely see... Um, we regularly see customers' uh, cars mounting the footpath. Um, it's bound to happen. It was late at night with a number of customers... I would, I would point out, Mayor, that I am representing 15 objectors and yes. I'd just like to talk briefly about the frontage to Dunstan oh. Avenue. Um, Dunstan Avenue is a residential street. There are houses immediately opposite this site and there are houses adjacent. McDonald's is not an, activity, an appropriate activity for a residential street. We propose that the current wall be maintained. Your officials talk about security, that the fact that a wall along the street we propose a high wall along Dunstan Avenue. Uh, security, 
There's been a high wall there for 110 years. There's been no security problem. Um, your officials also, also talk about vandalism and bill posting on the wall. Well, what about the wall immediately to the north, which is marked on the diagram? Won't that also be subject to vandalism and bill posting? Uh, what we suggest is a condition with the wall that McDonald's should be responsible for maintaining the conditions of the walls around it. The plantation that McDonald's are proposing along Dunstan Avenue is ludicrously narrow. Your officials, in fact, are on to this point because they're proposing that the width be increased to one metre. And that's increased to one metre. That shows just how narrow it is. But um, it's still too narrow in our point of view. Now, um, what's the reason for this problem? Uh, this is a small, difficult and irregular site. And the reason is that McDonald's are trying to cram as many car parks and drive-throughs into it as possible. Um, McDonald's uh, should have thought about how to use this site before they purchased it uh, while also enhancing the amenity of the neighbourhood. Uh, this they have not done. And I just have one further point to make. Uh, the officers report and McDonald's talk about how dilapidated the building is uh, on the court at 53 Albion Street. McDonald's bought this property early this year and uh, immediately after they bought it, they made every effort to ensure that it was as dilapidated and as unattractive as possible. Uh, they did have to secure the building, it wasn't safe, we concede that, but in doing so, they have made it as dilapidated and as unattractive as possible. Thank, Thank you very much indeed. Yes, sir. Um, I'm Lyle Stebbing from Home Street. I basically want to uh, support all the points that Tim has made, except for a new point that I picked up, is that the officer's report refers to um, pulling down the brick wall and replacing it with foliage. And it says that um, it would negatively impact interactions between the site and the public realm. And we don't understand why there should be more interactions between McDonald's and the public realm. All the interactions, my street, I'm in Home Street, my house has with McDonald's, is litter. We don't want interactions with, yes. the, with the site. Um, it also talks about a positive outcome. It talks about visually more appealing. That's pulling down the wall on Dunstan Avenue. They're, they're subjective opinions. Appealing in whose eyes? Mm. Surely the eyes of the residents people, uh, have more, should have more credence than the opinions of an of official who, who mightn't even live in the area. And we would prefer a wall because we don't think that McDonald's should have open access to a residential street. The other point that I'd like to um, uh, <coughs> reinforce is the problem with litter and pulling down that little fence along Home Street and Elvian Street will increase litter. It will blow across whatever foliage there. If there's more interaction, that will mean people being more tempted to kind of just throw it on the ground outside McDonald's. They throw it on the ground inside McDonald's and then the wind carries it. I'm continually picking up rubbish from the front garden of my house and so are my neighbours. Um, and the, the, again, the idea of the patrols, you'll probably at this moment see lots of them for the week before, the week before that, and the week coming. But then they lapse. Once McDonald's is secure that nothing's going to, uh, that there will be no consequences for the litter that its, resident, uh, that its uh, customers leave, it just basically stops the patrols. And the other thing I would like to point out about the officer's report is that the demolish the fence, that's the fence or low wall on Home Street and Albion Street is not a consideration under this application. But it is a consideration because we feel that that sets a boundary between McDonald's and the neighbourhood and that that boundary should be reinforced, not demolished. And should, in particular because of the problems with litter. I've rung up McDonald's, I've been in Home Street for 16 years, I reckon I've made maybe 50 calls to council to complain about litter. If you ring McDonald's, they don't answer. They stop, maybe they saw my number coming up again on their machine and they just don't answer. Um, or they um, absolve themselves of all responsibility and say, yes, we have some irresponsible customers. 
Okay, I'll get so that I, I would like the wall retained, the low wall around Home Street and into uh, along Albion Street, where actually the foliage at the moment is two metres. So they're actually cutting that back, if it's going to be one metre. And I also believe there should be a wall, not foliage on Dunstan Avenue, to, uh, to maintain the nature of a residential street. Okay, thank you very much. <coughs> Any other objectors like to speak? Um, I'll go this chair, this lady. Sorry, yeah, there you go. yes, you can come up, madam. Good evening to Good evening. all the members and um, the other people present here tonight. Um, I apologise if anything that I say has been already um, presented by other <coughs> members of our community, and I appreciate your ears. Um, and uh, also, you know, uh, uh, to be heard without anyone smirking at me. Um, I speak on behalf of one of the residents in Dunstan Avenue, and um, we, we as residents had no real major concern knowing that really this was a battle between David and Goliath, and we, we're David and we're not going to win this battle. So whatever the development inside the property of McDonald's, the second drive and all that, we had no particular issue with. But our concern um, is that the landscaping that's going to happen, or lack thereof, according to satisfaction of different people, um, along that um, western side of um, the 53 Albion Street property. Really directly opposite that big wall and those buildings that have been standing, and the first concern with the knocking down of those buildings is the opening up of that space and that open air. We know that intersection, that S-Bend and along Home Street is very, very trafficated, very busy, creates a lot of noise. Currently, those buildings were buffering that noise from the residents in Dunstan Avenue, going through from number one to three, number two, and so on until you get to that bend, I guess, um, beyond that, um, people are less affected because they're not going to have that open space directly facing them. So the concern is the noise that's going to be um, created. Well, the noise is there, but heard. Hence, what would we like to see in the landscaping on that western side is a higher wall. A, a wall and a hedging that is high enough to, one, to visually hide the traffic of cars going up and down that drive, because property number one um, in Dunstan Avenue would be staring at that from the bedroom and from the sitting room all day long, all night long, given whatever hours you decide that the drive through is <coughs> going to work. So in improving um, that landscaping, not allowing for open spaces where people can cut across would minimise tra traffic doing a whole um, trip right round the block coming down Dunstan Avenue, pulling up, uh, double parking on the side where they can jump that fence, quickly run in and pick up their food and their takeaway with, you know, whatever kids in the back seat or, or other hoons hanging around. Um, Having that as a sealed vegetated area would minimise that kind of um, possible no, problem. I'll ask you to finish up in the next few seconds, please. And, um, okay, so we're after those two things. One, yeah, minimising the traffic, the visual, and buffering some noise. So we're asking that McDonald's works with us in looking at that whole landscaping of that western side. Thank you very much. Uh, gentleman in the front, yes, and, and then. Yeah, my name is Robert Redpath. I have a business at 500 Ligon Street, quite close to the site. And uh, the, my concern that I want to mention is that the building that uh, has partially demolished now is a building of exceptional charm and uh, in its appearance. And I was exceptionally disappointed to see the partial demolition before it was really determined whether uh, any kind of demolition should be permitted. And I would like to see the building retained and perhaps its use could be modified, but uh, it adds so much to the character of the area, it's a real loss to see it go. Mm. Thank you. 
Um, it didn't have a heritage overlay at the time, so that allowed it a demolition to be, but and it wasn't. It didn't have a heritage overlay. Whether it should or not is a different argument, but the fact was it didn't have a heritage overlay. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Uh, Nick. Okay. Yeah. Can we get um, that page up on the um, um, Nick Dolby, Holt of Crescent West Brunswick? Though in the recent past, I lived for twenty years uh, within a few blocks of this site. Um, what can I say? I'm um, Bolshe. First of all, it's a McDonald's. Um, I won't say anything else on that. Um, this, the heritage streetscape on the south side of Albion Street, there is a heritage streetscape. It is also, quote, a landmark site. The intersection of Ligon Homes and Albion Streets is a landmark site. And what this is doing is, in fact, substantially altering that landmark site opening it up, opening up that intersection and changing its focus away from the heritage elements to, in fact, a McDonald's store. That's the first objection I have to it. Secondly, there is a bike path, an off-road bike path, running on the north side of Albion Street from Sydney Road to Dunstan Avenue which then leads on to most cyclists would either then go up Dunstan Avenue or along Ligon Street. This will encourage traffic along, uh, more traffic along Albion Street at precisely the point where cyclists will be having to go onto the road. Finally, okay, noise. If you look south of Albion Street, there is the former um, uh, pub on the corner. It's got an open car park at its rear. If you open up number 53 Albion Street, the site of number 53 Albion Street, you'll not only get increased noise travelling to Dunstan Avenue, you'll get increased noise travelling to the residents of Albion Street and Stanley Street. Moreland has an integrated transport strategy. We are trying to encourage people to use active transport. We are trying to encourage them away from cars. And yet, here is a car-dependent business that is trying to promote people's use of cars, and this plan encourages that. It talks about reducing queuing in Albion Street. Queuing in Albion Street is a tool that reduces use of this site by cars. Pedestrians and cyclists will have more cars to deal with as they walk along what is in fact a major intersection for pedestrians and cyclists. We are devoting more land in this area to cars with this development proposal. Bike parking. They have no bike parking. They're, they've got, what, three times more car parking than they're required to by regulations, and they have no bike parking. So why are we allowing them to have more car parking? It's, it's a car focus that I can't understand. It's, it's, we need to get rid of it. A wall at 53, I know the building's gone. It's pity. It was a beautiful building. Actually, I really liked it. We need a wall on 53 Dunstan Avenue, uh, sorry, 53 Albion Street. And yes, there needs to be a provision in their permit that they are picking up litter every hour on the hour in the area. Thank you, Nick. Are there any other objectors? Yes, sir. Uh, thanks for listening to me. I just arrived very late tonight, so I haven't heard all the arguments, but I get the gist of it. Yeah. My main concern in relation to this development is that McDonald's, from the moment they set up there, knew it was a restricted area in terms of space. We're not talking about here a piece of land that has future potential to expand in a significant way. I agree they have to make a living, they have rights, and so do the residents. I'm coming to a compromise that satisfies nobody, but at least doesn't dissatisfy completely everybody, is probably the best outcome. Dunstan Avenue and the building in question that is going to be pulled down is right on the edge of the footpath. So by pulling that down, uh, McDonald's does not gain any space unless they are planning eventually to infringe, impinge into Dunstan Avenue to get a circular throw through there. So the fundamental uh, opposition that we have to this, the few residents are speaking for myself, and number one, is that already we have a problem with people congregating there that are drifting away 
from the nightclub across the road, going to McDonald's, entering Downstown Avenue, sitting to our front fence, and finishing the lunch there, mm -hmm. and discarding the litter within our property and outside our property. If you facilitate a law fence or, or uh, uh, garden trees or anything, that the last people to sneak through, that is actually going to worsen. So the fundamental objection that we have is that if they had to put the wall, if they entitled to put the wall, well, so be it. But something has to replace it that is a physical barrier to stop the flow easily from Downstar Avenue in and out of McDonald's. As long as they do the reasonable job, let them have their extra driveway, but they also have to accept the limitation imposed by the size of the site itself. And to <laughs> expand it beyond that is impinging in the rights of the residents that have been there for many, many years. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any other objectors? Is there a representative of the applicant? Thank you, Mr Chair, councillors and staff. Um, and thanks for the opportunity to present this evening. Uh, we agree wholeheartedly with the officer report that's been forwarded to tonight's um, uh, meeting. It effectively undertakes a balanced assessment um, having a regard to what uh, McDonald's has actually applied uh, a permit for or, or what the actual relevant considerations are. Um, it acknowledges that it's an amendment and it balances what is proposed against the Moreland planning scheme, including the local policy, especially in relation to these sort of interface issues or interface areas where you've got commercial uses in an activity centre proximate or next door to, to residential uses. Now, the, the main reason for this application, well, there are two main reasons for this application. The first one is really to improve vehicle management within the site. So if you go down to the site at any one time, there's one queuing lane, uh, one order box um, to allow uh, 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 food ordering. This effectively enables that to be double loaded. It's not proposing to intensify the use, the patron numbers, the size of the restaurant, the operating hours. Nothing is proposed to change. It's just about shifting the queue from Albion Street onto the subject site. So it's removing queuing and removing traffic issues in the public realm onto a private property. That's effectively the, the, the genesis for this application. In response to that, there's also been, um, I guess, the, bu the building, or not the building, sorry, the outside of the building or the perimeter of the site, it looks dated, it looks tired. It's got a pretty ordinary looking concrete block wall, wall um, a couple of trees uh, along the site, um, and really not much in terms of a, a public realm, urban design, landscaping type response. So what this proposal does is, is to really renew the site in line with their new restaurant designs and effectively come up with a proposal that is an improved landscape outcome that provides, I guess, a visual um, landscape uh, setting uh, to the east and to the south. In terms of the dilapidated building that's, that's been raised, the landscape proposal along that site, which we say is better than a wall or a, a, the existing building, is effectively four metre high lily pilly hedging that can be trained and on a wire and confined so it does form a barrier. Then there's a seven metre high banksia tree in the top corner next to the, um, uh, the residential properties. We say that is a better outcome than a wall. Um, it's a more expensive outcome than a wall because um, uh, what would effectively happen is retention of that existing brick wall when we say this is an improved outcome to effectively come up with something that, that's going to look better in the area. Um, in terms of the building and the comments about uh, McDonald's letting it get dilapidated, my understanding is that there was a building, building order or something because the building was unsafe once McDonald's had purchased it. So there was some work done to try and understand how it was structurally, what needed to happen in the short term or the long term in terms of making that building safe and that's why how it appears, that's why it appears the way it does in, the, in those photos. Um, there have been a few items raised and things obviously about litter and whatnot. Obviously, I'll get you to start to yeah, finish fair up. enough. Um, they're obviously managed by the existing permit. We're not proposing to change that or intensify the use. Ultimately, we just support the officer's recommendation and agree with what's put forward to you. Okay, just before you go on, any questions of the applicant? Yes? Just to clarify, the wall that the residents were talking about, I think it was. Dunstan, Dunstan Avenue. So you're saying you'll build a was it four metre high? Can you just, just clarify. Yeah. So the the landscape plan effectively shows. 
along that, that edge. Um, now, there's a condition about making that about a metre wide. It already is. I think it's about, it scales off at about 1.2, but it's not dimensioned. So it's more a clarification, I understand. So that, that space won't change. What are you proposing to build there? Four metre high lily pillies. Um, it's not a wall. It's a, no, it's no, no not a wall. The wall's okay. been removed. Gotcha. With some training climbers, Trace. effectively. Trace. Yeah. Councillor Rowett, um, for the applicant. Yes, um, can you just explain the improved landscape outcomes because it's not clear on the... Well, I can see what you're putting on the west wall and you've just described the lily pillies at four metres. I'm more than happy for that. There's going to be a lot of... It's like the lily pilly outside my house. It's going to be a lot of litter on the ground along with the McDonald's that gets left outside of my house. And I'm just for about 400 metres south of you off Ligon, so I know how far the litter gets to, um, and I'm often having to pick it up and put it away too. So it's an issue for McDonald's, but it's also an issue for the people who use McDonald's, is my view. But I'm just wondering, if we go back to the original photos, which I'm not asking you to do, but the trees on the, on the eastern and the southern border are heavily and, well, I mean, massively pruned in the photos that, that the officers put up earlier. I'm just wondering what your plans are about improved landscaping because I'm really befuddled. Um, what this application does is it in increases the hard surfaces. We've got a strategy as a city which has one of the hottest cities in Melbourne, Greater Melbourne, and we've got an urban heat island effect. And I'm just wondering how your, your strategy to improve the landscape is going to improve the urban heat island effect. So there's the landscaping I just spoke to, including the lily pillies and the banksia. There's the retention of the trees along the southern and eastern boundaries. And then there's inclusion of ground covers, shrubs and, and low-lying planting all the way along there. So you're going to let the trees grow a bit rather than cut them back like they are? Uh, in terms of the existing trees... See these ones here? I mean, these ones are really cut back. And the, and the ones on the other photos... Can so those, those ones there? Yeah, these ones here. Yeah, that, they'll, they'll be removed because yeah. that's where the drive-through is. No, I understand that. But yeah. the other trees on the south and the east are really... See here, look at this. Yeah. The existing drive-through. Look at that tree. What, what time of the year was that taken? I understand if it's winter because it's lost its leaves. But I'm just a bit concerned about the sort of heavy pruning. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll go to Councillor Bolton. Um, I'm sorry, no more from the audience now. Okay, just one more question. Uh, what the point is of removing the low wall from um, Home Street and uh, Albion Street? To replace, to replace it with landscaping along that ground edge with covers, shrubs, long grasses, natives and things like that. Can, can I ask a question on that? Couldn't you keep the low wall and just put the plantings in front of it? Uh, yes, but it's a block wall about that wide. So it's really about getting a green outcome that you can see, I guess, visibly obvious from, from, from the footpath. Okay. Uh, it's a tired looking wall, effectively. Okay. So. And Councillor Boone, and then we might come in. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering if you have the information about how many times that wall's been smashed into and what it's cost to replace. Oh, I don't, sorry. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. We're going to. Do I have a motion from our council, please? I have a question for one of the... Oh, yeah, for the, for the objector. Objector. Okay, the, yes. The last objector that spoke. Yeah, you said. Yeah, just a question. So the applicant is proposing to remove that wall along that Dunstan Avenue with lily pillies um, and framing. Isn't that a better design outcome uh, to no. look at, or you prefer the... the no, no. I, I think that is... Uh, in the sky, as it has been pointed out with the front landscaping. Unfortunately, trees in, in a hot summer will dry up. If they're not wet on a regular basis and mining time consistently, they will deteriorate. And I'm a taxi driver for 25 years and I've gone through all McDonald's across Melbourne and there is not a McDonald's with um, landscaping walls that hasn't been broken through by everyone. You can cut it wide, wise break, People cut the hole across not to get to go around the block. So there is no real <coughs> reasonable excuse not to have at least the other thing to be in order to prevent the cars as they enter and putting the headlights across the road and cutting through the windows. You need something more than just the wall. You okay. need to retire the wall that is sufficient high to stop probably the same high as an SUV, to stop the lights from the headlights at night. 
to be bothered in the residency national admin. Okay. And secondly, there is no, it's not impossible to still have a very reasonable row of hedging behind a wall and probably more protected because as the trees grow, the lower ends, they always stay very sparsely populated with leaves. So I think what the gentleman suggested, I going to work really poorly. In my opinion, in my experience, it's a lot of hopeless. Okay, thank you very much. All right, okay, now do we have a motion, councillors? No, Councillor Bolton. I've actually got an alternative, okay. which I haven't, uh, well, I sort of said through the dot points um, earlier. So it is this recommendation with the following amendments to add a uh, second point or, or like insert a new point after point one, so a new point two. Um, so 2A would read, retain the low wall fronting Albion Street and Home Street and 2B, install a wall on the western boundary fronting Dunstan Avenue and in condition 15, uh, on regarding just one second, Councillor. Yeah. Did this go through to? Um, I said that uh, through, uh, but it was very late because I sort of really got the information a little bit okay. late. No, I did. Oh, actually, I didn't send it to you. Sorry, no, no, okay. I sent it to Phil. It was would you sort of, Would you better send it? I'll down? send it through. Yeah. To Sally or to Saskia? Either one. Okay, we'll just we'll just pause for a minute while we get that done, please. I'll send it. Oh, you've sent it. You've right. sent it. So you got it. And um, there is a third point of it, um, which came up uh, when the objectors were speaking, and that is to increase the distance of the litter patrols in condition 15 from 100 metres to 200 metres. Oh, that wasn't in it. Yeah, no, that was something I thought of when I heard the objectors right, okay. speaking. Okay, we'll just, we'll just, to repeat repeat that one. just give them a chance before we... So we're just going to have silence for a minute. So so I'm very sorry about this, but the um, information I got came through a bit late. So just to be clear, we're adding a 2C. Uh, so after point one, I'm not sure if this is the best place to put it, but after point one, insert an extra point, which would be like a new point two, which would have an A and a B. Can I suggest through through the chair? Yeah. So if we're looking at condition one in the recommendation, and there's a one A that deals with landscaping, yeah, um, with a number of points to that, the two points that are about the wall feature within the landscaping area. I'm, yeah. I'm still playing catch up here, but if I think that's probably the most imp the most appropriate point. But the appropriate place to place to actually add additional points in relation to the landscaping. Okay. I'm happy with that. I mean, it's what and would fit best within. Sorry, still there are additional dot points on under point one A and the and the various dot points relating to the landscaping changes. Okay. Then we will get them on the screen at some point. Take it. Yeah. Okay, Phil, can you stop at that place? 1A? Yep. Yep. And then the only one other bit is if we come down to condition 15, if we, uh, 15, if we amend the 100 metres to 200 metres. Okay. Okay. Right. Is it, everyone clear on that? Every councillor clear on that? Okay. Okay, so that's uh, moved by Councillor Bolton. Do we have a second for Councillor Bolton? Councillor Farnley. Now, would you like to speak to a Councillor Bolton? Yeah. 
Uh, just very briefly, I um, certainly I can understand the reason why the, um, the recommendations coming to council were more for um, vegetation kind of landscaping, but I do feel quite convinced by the objectors about the need for some these walls. Now, I don't think walls by themselves will um, eliminate all of the litter issues with McDonald's, high winds, etc. cetera, uh, mean that the litter travels a long distance. But I think um, it does provide a little bit of a buffer and um, a little bit of a restriction. And the other, one of the objectors just also um, said just before, a point which <coughs> I hadn't thought of before, that also the headlights shining through the vegetation, um, that could be an issue, especially for anyone who is a shift worker, um, um, trying to get some sleep and so forth, and if um, it's the house directly across the road. Um, so I don't really see, um, you know, I don't think there are a lot of extra points to make. I think the litter patrols do need to be increased. I mean, I'm not sure if this is enough of an increase. Uh, I gather from the, talking to the residents, they know exactly where people park after they've, you know, left McDonald's to, you know, eat and chuck out the litter because there's no bins um, in a range of different places on Dunstan Avenue um, and a bit further north on Mitchell Street. But um, so I don't think we're going to eliminate all of the issues with litter, but at least if we can adopt some of these measures to at least remediate, um, remediate the issues um, somewhat. And just before I go to ask Councillor Farnley, just with the wall, the one about the wall height, uh, we've got no mention of the height of the wall. Okay, I think it's important that we have a height. Oh, you mean the existing? The, no, the, in, the, where it says the install wall. a wall instead of the plantings. Okay, I think. It, wouldn't it match the wall that's to the north, which is the buffer between number two, Dunstan Avenue, and the dock? Okay, and if, if you're happy to put that in, yes. Yes, yes. yes I, I'm, now we might okay, need to say it a little bit um, louder. So it's um, the wall between number two. The, the applicants are proposing a wall between number two Dunstan Avenue and this site. Yeah. And there's a wall on the northern side. All we're doing is adding yeah. a right. wall on the western side. <coughs> right. the two walls okay, to so install a wall at the same height as the other wall that's there. Yeah. yeah. So, um, okay, all right. As the wall that abuts number two, Dunstan okay, Avenue. All right. All right. Uh, Councillor Afarley, would you like to speak to me? Yeah, probably. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, thanks everyone for coming out and, and speaking about this issue. Uh, I concur with a lot of the um, feelings from the residents about frustrations about living near McDonald's. I lived near one in Craven a long time ago. Uh, and so I just wanted to understand a little bit more about your feelings regarding retaining the wall or, or having something that's a bit more visually appealing to look at. But I, <coughs> understand that the wall provides a little bit of privacy onto that street and the residents on that street. Uh, and so uh, I want to support you in uh, your endeavours to retain that wall. I also uh, thank the, uh, one of the objectives who mentioned uh, that uh, understand that uh, uh, McDonald's has a right to um, <coughs> do this given that they've purchased the property, but let's try to compromise and, and respect the residents that live in the area. So I think this is the best compromise situation providing a little bit of privacy to the residents that abut the street and also along Dunstan Avenue. Uh, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, uh, the, uh, the outcome is as good as it possibly could be, uh, given that you are uh, Thank you, Councillor Parley. Any other speakers on this item? Okay, yes, Councillor Riley. I do have to speak, this is, what can, I mean, I'm concerned about the lack of a landscape, you know, I understand that the proponents are proposing better landscaping, but it doesn't really shine through in the application. I'm also very concerned about doing these amendments on the run because whilst I see some benefits in having a wall, I'm really not happy about a high wall there. I would have thought 
um, having more vegetation would, it seems to me, to contradict my, my need of having more vegetation and less urban heat island effect. And you're going to get more urban heat island effect with a big brick wall. So I'm having real uh, difficulty understanding where this motion is going and having difficulty wondering how it's going to go. It's not, um, a, it's not uh, I think some of the, the uh, residents spoke very eloquently <coughs> about some of these real issues, particularly around the um, activating transport. I know we can't, we cannot require the proponent to provide bicycle parking and I, you know, you have to ask yourself why they haven't done that so far. I'd really encourage them to consider that in the future. <coughs> can't do that in this application. Um, however, um, the urban heat island effect and the lack of shade on this, on all these hard services does concern me and I think it's only expanding it, it's not reducing it. I'm very concerned about some amendments on the run as well. Okay, thank you, Councillor Riley. Are there any other speakers? Okay, I'm going to put this to the vote. All those in favour? Okay. Against? I'm abstaining. And, and against and abstaining. Okay, I'll declare that carried. Okay. All right, now, before we move on to the next item, could I have a motion for the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Abood, to take the chair for the next item as I've declared a conflict of interest? Moved by Councillor Bolton, seconded by Councillor Dorney. Can I put that to the vote? All those in favour, against, declare that carried. Uh, before we go, do you want to... Let the officer. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, yes, sorry. Cool. Next step forward, sorry, next step, yep. Thank you. Councils, oh, my fault. The uh, okay, council has uh, determined to uh, support the proposal subject to the alternative recommendation uh, put forward this evening. Uh, the applicant and objective parties will receive a copy of the notice of uh, decision to grant a permit. Objective parties have 28 days in which to lodge an, uh, an appeal with VCA. Uh, similarly, the permit applicant has an opportunity to appeal any conditions imposed by the council. Thank you. Thank you. Apologies, Robert. Thank you, Robert. <coughs> so the next report of the evening is DED 6018, Part CP1 on plan of subdivision 543333S and 35. 41 and 45 Pentridge Boulevard, Coburg, MPS 20171006D1829184. Uh, and I'll move to the officer to present the report. Thank you, good evening. Um, this is an application uh, for the construction of a 17 storey mixed use building and townhouses uh, at land known as Park CP1 on Plan Planner Subdivision 54333S and 35, 41 and 45 Pentridge Boulevard in Coburg. More specifically, it's land sited at the northeastern corner of Pentridge Boulevard and Urquhart Street. Subject sites covered by the Activity Centre Zone Schedule 1, which includes a 16-storey preferred maximum height. It's also covered by the Environmental Audit Overlay, Parking Overlay, Road Closure Overlay and the Development Contributions Plan. Pentridge Village, Ma Pentridge Village Master Plan is also an incorporated document in the planning scheme. Um, specific directions for this site include uh, noting that the, the corner of Urquhart Street and Pentridge Boulevard is suitable for a market building, and then it also recommends uh, reducing the height down towards the northeast where it interfaces with existing dwellings. The site has some history. There's an existing planning permit which was approved by the Minister for Planning. That permit allows two 16-storey buildings and one four-storey building. This planning permit is still valid. Current application is exempt from notice. Um, however, informal notice was undertaken. Uh, no submissions were received. The key planning considerations are the height and design of the proposed apartment building, the internal amenity of apartments and townhouses, off-site amenity impacts, townhouse car parking and also the landscaping response. The proposal, as you can see here, is for a 17-storey apartment building in at the corner of the site of the Pentridge Boulevard of Urquhart Street corner, um, with townhouses occupying the rest of the site. Um, around the perimeter of the site, there's deep soil planting areas, 
uh, with planting, so the internal of the site is contained largely within planter boxes due to it being located above the basin. The 17 story building comprises of 142 apartments, uh, a ground level restaurant, and approximately 1,100 uh, square meters of communal, communal facilities for residents. There are 49 townhouses proposed, which range in height between two and three stories. Um, it's a combination of basement and ground level <coughs> parking proposed. Uh, the provision of some of the car parking within the basement level reduces the dominance of car parking uh, at ground level and improves the pedestrian environment. Um, the townhouses are also accessed by a private road, which has a minimum width of 5.5 metres in accordance with the planning scheme. The recommendation is to grant a planning permit subject to conditions. Key conditions include confirming changes to the apartment building design in accordance with concept plans received, uh, ensuring compliance with overlooking and side boundary setback standards of 465 for some of the townhouses adjacent to the residential properties in Lynn Street, um, and there's various conditions to ensure the ongoing viability of landscaping. Council officers are also putting forward an alternative recommendation tonight. Uh, I'm not sure if we have that at hand on the screen. The alternative recommendation uh, adds in a new condition 35 that relates to affordable housing. Um, the condition requires the applicant to enter into a section 173 agreement with council, um, committing to provide up to 5% of the housing uh, at cost to a housing association. Um, this is in response to an offer from the applicant. Thank you. Um, are there any objectors or submitters who would like to speak to this motion. I, un I understand it didn't go out for broad public notice, um, but if anyone did have anything they wanted to say now, I'll leave you now. Only because there's, well, partly uh, because this section 173 agreement's come up, it's, uh, it's rare to get these, it's, it's most welcome. Um, I certainly um, find it very attractive. I'll also comment upon the dead end section of Urquhart Street, which uh, with this development, it may be possible to restore it to a soft surface, part of parkland, part of the Coburg High School site perhaps, um, rather than a streetscape. Thank you. Uh, does the applicant or representative of the applicant wish to speak? Yes. Come forward. Thank you. Lachlan, did you have um, yes. a presentation? Yes, I did. Acting Mayor, Councillors, Council staff, thank you very much. My name's David Barnes. I'm a town planner and I've worked with the, um, the developer and the permit application and with Council staff throughout this process in, uh, in getting this matter before you. So I'd just like to make a few comments, if I can, just in relation to um, the project. Um, can I, if you could put that in your computer, I should just be able to go through some of this slide. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it's up there. It's not there. Um, who's running the computer? Is it a lady up the back? No, you know, no. won't be able to, we'll be able to operate it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, is that my presentation? Yes. Yeah, so, how can I go page down? If you want, you can use this mouse. Oh, okay. Cool. Right. Thank you. Um, this is a different this is a different scale of development to which council has been considering today. But it is in an activity centre zone. It's a very major strategic redevelopment site, and all of the planning policies and controls that apply to the area does encourage and actually seek to facilitate. Um, quite um, significant redevelopment that um, this certainly is. I'd like to commend the development of the council. It's a fully integrated master planned uh, residential community and it integrates um, high rise apartments with the town housing. One of the key things we did as part of this pro proposal as part of the inception was really to revisit the, um, hold on, I'm just trying to get this to work. It's okay, I can, I can just make my comments. Um, I had some slides to go with them, but that's okay. Um, one of the key things was to revisit the uh, Prentice Village Master Plan. 
and to propose a significantly reduced scale of development and density of development <coughs> what the master plan proposes. The master plan talks about 16-storey building heights across this site. There's already a planning permit granted for two 16-storey buildings. So as part of this proposal, um, the applicants made a conscious decision to, to have one tower on the landmark site that was identified in the master plan, and that's a 17-storey tower. But then to redevelop the rest of the site for two and three-storey townhouses. And we believe that is a much better interface with the dwellings to the north. So if you look at, um, there's uh, two-storey dwellings to the north of the property. So it's a much better interface, we believe, because these parts of the site are for two and three-storey townhouses. And it also interfaces well with the three-storey development that the council has approved on this site. So we think that's um, something that, in our mind, is um, a very positive step. We've also worked um, over probably about a 12-month period very closely with the council staff. And we've considerably redesigned the development to take in on board comments that have been made by Lachlan, um, Morel Jennings and um, Marie Claire from the Urban Design Department. We've taken all the basement car parking out of the podium of the tower so that we activate the, the lower levels of the tower. We've extended the basement right across the whole site, right <coughs> under the townhouses, so that we can reduce the number of townhouses that have garages at ground level, which was a real issue that Council was concerned about from the outset. We've also worked very closely with Marie Claire to, to um, look at the details of the elevational treatments to get a really interesting, diverse um, appearance for what will be a landmark building in the area. I think it's important to realise that this application was notified and there were no objections whatsoever. In terms of sustainability, it's Australian best practice sustainability standards are built into the development. In relation to affordable housing, Lachlan put up a slide before that um, our, the applicant is, is willing to accept a condition on the planning permit um, for up to 5% of affordable housing. We think that's an appropriate thing to do and we're fully supportive of that condition, which wasn't in the original council officer's report, as I understand. Um, I'll just have to get you to start winding it up. I know sure. you had a bit of time to get your tech organised. No, that's all right. That's all right. Um, Council always expressed the importance for design excellence in relation to this development. And we certainly have tried um, to make sure that that's the case. We think it will be a landmark building. There's a lot of a lot built into it. It's, um, if you look at the image at the back, it staggers down and steps down considerably at the rear. There will be landscaping boxes right across all of the rear terraces, cascading down and providing a really soft landscaping treatment to that elevation. There's also terraces up and down the vertical face of the building which will have creepers and planting and vines and those sorts of things as well. So a lot has been built into it. And I'd also just like to thank um, the council staff um, throughout the process. They've been very helpful and worked very constructively with us to deliver what we think will be um, a great project for this part of um, Coburg and the Pentridge site. So thank, thank you very much. Uh, do the councillors have any questions for the applicant or the officers? Just got um, one question in regards to the um, the affordable housing. So it's up to five percent. Yep. Um, do you, can you give any indication? Because obviously zero is included in that up to five percent. Yep. What yep. guarantees can we get on uh, where that will probably land? The aim is to provide five percent. Yep. Um, the applicants in discussion with um, registered housing associations at the moment. And the reason why we're looking at that wording is because um, we are prepared to provide 5%, but we've got to have somebody who is prepared to take that 5%. We're looking at providing it at cost, so housing associations need to be able to take it up. So if people don't take it up, then we think there needs to be some flexibility in the wording of the condition. And that's the reason why up to. But we're certainly committed to providing 5%. Um, and we're working with housing associations. We haven't got um, a commitment yet to um, take up the dwellings, but um, we think that that will certainly be an opportunity. It's in a good development, in a good location, where it'll certainly be much sought over. And a lot of it depends on funding by those organisations. Thank you. Councillor Riley? Just to, to uh, in addition to that, we... <coughs> Is there at all a possibility that you might actually go higher than that if the Housing Association was interested in more? Um, I don't know. That would have to be up to the developer. Um, 
But it is possible. A, it, it could be possible. They really want to sell the units, and anybody who takes them up is a good thing. But in terms of like a requirement as part of a planning permit condition, we thought the up to five percent was was a as an appropriate level. We did have quite extensive meetings with Lachlan and the Affordable Housing Office officer from Council in terms of what we can provide. It's a bit of a new system at the moment. It's still evolving. There's still even uncertainty within Council in terms of how that system is applied. But we thought this was a a good offer um, where the situation at the moment with um, State Government Council is. Are there any further questions? No, uh, if there are no further questions, um, could I please have a motion? <coughs> Councillor Martin. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you, uh, councillors. Um, I'm uh, looking to move an alternative motion uh, very similar to the officer's alternative motion, um, except it brings, uh, it deletes uh, one story um, from the building, um, just to bring it down in line with what the uh, Minister for Planning um, originally agreed to. So if I have a seconder, I'm happy to speak to this. Councillor Riley. Um, thank you. So. Um, I really do want to start by commending the officers and the amount of work that's gone into this application. Um, you know, I've noted um, over 100, uh, you know, conditions or dot points um, on this, uh, on this, you know, um, report. So it is, it is fantastic to see the level of detail, the depth um, in here. Uh, I think the addition of the affordable housing really does um, make it a lot easier for us to um, approve this um, application. It is very challenging uh, being a council, basically being told that you have um, these, these are your options. You've got two 16 storey buildings, which is what the current planning permit says, um, or you can have a much better design uh, with lower density. Um, but again, you still don't control uh, the height, which is incredibly frustrating. Um, I think the, the changes in here and some of the changes um, including provision of uh, electric vehicle charging. We've checked the road widths to make sure that um, some of the issues that we've had uh, up in Faulkner don't occur again, so that there's actually um, provision and, and road width um, uh, allowing for um, emergency vehicles to, to get through, which I think is great. Um, I also think that some of the changes to the ESD and, and while um, I really wish somebody would change some of the uh, some of the words best practice and Australian best and excellent standard. Um, it, while it is still only an average of 6.6, .6, where we're seeing some other uh, planning applications come in at about eight, uh, all the way up to 8.7. So um, there is still a bit of a gap between some of the best that we're seeing in Moreland, but um, I do acknowledge that it is a lot better um, than what we had originally. So. Um, yeah, I, I urge councillors to um, consider supporting this um, and aligning uh, the maximum height with what the minister originally um, approved. Councillor Riley, would you like to speak to it as the seconder? Uh, are there any other councillors that would like to, Councillor Bolton? Yeah, I'd like to speak. I mean, I think um, it is good that the amendment or alternative resolution to reduce the height to 16 storeys has been moved. I mean, I think um, the preferred height limit should mean something um, for council. But um, despite that, I am going to speak against, um, against the proposal on probably mainly predominantly two grounds. Um, one thing I'm concerned about a building of this scale right in that location because I know there is a big issue on the corner of Pentridge Boulevard and Urquhart Street with the school crossing. Um, now, obviously, if we win a set of traffic lights there, that will um, assist. But I know that there has been um, a lot of agitation from parents about the lack of safety on, at that particular location. Now, obviously, um, as more buildings go up in Pentridge, it's not just this particular building, but there will be a massive number of vehicle movements right at that point where there is um, this high school, which, um, you know, sends lots of kids out on, onto the road. 
Um, so that is one thing which concerns me. I guess the other thing that concerns me is the um, open space, communal open space. The fact that the communal open space, um, well, communal indoor space is being used to make up the communal open space. Um, I think the figure was um, that there's uh, 231.5 square metres of communal open space on the site when the requirement is 250 square metres. So um, those are two things which do concern me, so I'll vote against. Any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Riley. Oh, thank you. Look, um, the, the main reason I'm rising to speak is because uh, I am concerned about the height issues in, in this part of Brunswick, but, uh, sorry, Coburg, but this is all being set in place by the Minister, so I can't actually influence that, but I do um, support the, the move to re remove one level to try and bring it in line with the Minister's original decision. Um, I do think it's a plus that, in fact, we're only getting one down, not two, and uh, it looks to me, from what I saw before, it's a slightly better um, design. And the other issue that I wanted to really reiterate was the the move towards some affordable housing component with you wearing my affordable housing hat. I'm surprised that that's happened. I'm very pleased that that's happened. I would like to have seen a greater extent, but I understand uh, your position tonight in terms of this being the beginning. And uh, ideally, the state government should have just made sure that all developments of this size and um, impact do provide affordable housing as a matter of course for all developers and then we wouldn't be having this problem. So I think the lack of leadership is something that we're all dealing with and I think that we, we as a council are trying to address that to some degree, but that's another story. So I just want to acknowledge that and um, uh, it's a small beginning, but it's it's something in this, in this regard. And um, if you could go further, I'd encourage you to do that. Can I start with lots of the... Councillor Yildiz has asked that the motion be put. Um, do, we, do we need to vote to resolve if the, count, if the motion needs to be put? Okay. You have to. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, so with that in mind, um, if the, there will be no further debate and I'll ask that the motion be put. So all those in favour? Of the motion being put or the... All, all those in favour of... The resolution, which has been amended by Councillor Martin. Yes. Okay. The resolution. Thank you. Against? Oh, actually, sorry. No. You're against. Please I'm, I'm actually against. Not. against. Sorry. <laughs> we'll just do I that again. We're fighting on the motion being put. Yeah, sure. That's okay. Um, so, all those in favour of Councillor Martin's motion, which is the amended officer report, and all those against. So, I declare that that was one. We have it noted, please. Yes. Could we have uh, a division? So we should probably see that again. All those in favour? Riley, Martin, Afanli, Abood, Dorney, Davidson, Callahan. And against? <laughs> Quite from the gallery, please. Cool. So, if someone could invite the mayor back into, sorry, <laughs> Lachlan, if you could tell us what happens next, please. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want to move a motion? So the council has decided to issue a planning permit uh, for the construction of a 16-storey mixed-use building and townhouses uh, at the subject site subject to the conditions contained within the alternative motion. Oh, sorry. Following the issue of the planning permit, the applicant has 60 days to appeal conditions on the permit at the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal. Thank you. If we could invite the Mayor back into the meeting now, please. We have a procedure for the mayor to resume the chair. Thank you. 
Um, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, and that was the final item of tonight's business. So, councillors, members of the gallery, and our viewers live streaming at home, I declare the meeting closed at 9.12 p.m. Have a good evening. So I'm Claire Johnston and I'm an accredited cricket bat maker and the first female in the world. I um, learnt how to make cricket bats from Ian Cullen. There's a lot of bats out there for men and I felt that there was an opportunity there to actually work with women to make better bats and to actually make them for their style. So recently I was commissioned to make five cricket bats for the Pasco Vale Headfield uh, Cricket Club for their under 13s girls cricket team and uh, yeah, to see their faces when they were given the cricket bats was just brilliant. So what I'd really love to be able to do is to keep working with my local community, the local cricket clubs, uh, particularly the women, and uh, yeah, work to make great cricket bats.